It's the East of England Arena and it's the second leg of the grand final. And I must say the track, I've had a good look at the track, it's in tip top condition. I've made my way into the first corner and down here on the inside with the dirtometer, just having a good dig around there, there is a decent amount of grip. Um, I've mentioned this before, this track is actually very heavily clay based, so there is quite a lot of tackiness in this material. Um, there's a little bit more moisture in it when there, we were here in the semi-finals, making my way into the middle of the track. There's still a little bit of grit there, but I would suggest that actually early doors, the middle of the track is a place you don't want to be. I think you'll probably get past on the inside or potentially as we look to the outside where they have actually dug into this, they've actually ripped this up and you can see a reasonable amount of material coming up. So. Um, I am expecting this to be used a little bit later on. It wasn't in the semi-final. That caught me by surprise because there wasn't quite enough moisture in it. But uh, tonight, I believe there is. Um, two teams finally poised, just the two points in it. It really is going to be a dramatic finish to this season. You got, there's a sense of atmosphere around the place. So thoroughly looking forward to it. It's going to be a fabulous night of Speedway. We hope so. Well, the coin toss is always important, but never more so than this evening. Let's join Brando with the captains. Thanks, Abby. Scott Nichols is going to toss the coin. Steve Worrell is going to call. Tails, Tails was called. Yeah. It's a tail. If you can't see your head, it's a tail, sir. Steve, come and, come and tell me what you're going to choose this evening, sir. We'll go with one and three, please. A uh, reverse of what happened on Monday night. Why one and three here? Uh, just feel like the starts are so even all the way across. It's such a short run to the first corner. I want to try and get off to a good start. And your half-time report after Monday? Uh, it threw away a couple of silly points. You know, it would have been nice to have a bit more of a lead, but we're confident coming in. We've we beat these guys twice now here, so, yeah. All right, good luck to you and your team tonight. Thank you. Scott, home captain. Um, Stevie's taking one and three, so two and four, but maybe importantly, you've got a choice in heat 15. How do you see tonight shaping up? Yeah, it could well go down to that last heat. Um, we know it's going to be close. Um, tough, well, it'd be nice if it isn't, and we win, but uh, no, we know it's going to be a tough contest. And how did you reflect after Monday? Two points at the end of the meeting was almost like a win for you. A fantastic night for us, you know, to lose hands early on. Like I said, it wasn't just a dent for the points, it really, you know, he's a big part of the team as a character, so. Um, um, yeah, 10 points down to claw it back to two. Uh, it was a remarkable night, so we can continue that momentum and the fighting spirit. All right, it's nearly race time. Good luck to you in the Thank Panthers you. tonight. Cheers. It is nearly race time. The guys are going out for the parade. Calvin, um, let's talk about the riders to watch, starting with the away side. Yeah, I've gone for their top man tonight, uh, Abby, because Stan Bewley is such a wonderful rider. He's a youngster, but he's really making big waves in the sport. He leads from the front. He is their top quality rider, and I think if he can lead from the front and really get off to a flying start here this evening in heat number one, that kind of sets the tone. So I've gone with him, but the Aces are a good-looking outfit now, particularly with the twins, the Worrell brothers back, and looking good. But uh, Bewley's my man for this evening. And for the Panthers? I've gone with Bjarni Pedersen for the, for the uh, Panthers this evening. Bjarni has dropped to reserves. So we're just waiting for them to come out. They're a bit reluctant. Maybe they're just having to recharge the batteries there. But um, here we see the boys coming out. It's good to see Michael Palmtoft here um, and Craig Cook coming in. But Bjarni Pedersen, vastly experienced. This is the end of his career. This is an end of an era for him. So I think that uh, he's upped his game just recently. So I'd like to think that he's going to put in a massive performance for his team tonight. Yeah, last big performance for his last ever Speedway meeting. Yeah, that's uh, what a way to go out. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I'm sure he's really keen to do well. Uh, he's been, uh, you know, it's a, he's done himself proud, you know. He's uh, been an international rider. He's uh, of some renown. So I think tonight's the sort of thing we're really getting going. Calvin, I can hardly hear you. This atmosphere is Oh, it's, it's wonderful. Something. It's really building up. Now the boys are on track with the parade. It's just sensational out there. Huge, huge crowd. So um, uh, an exciting night in prospect. Oh, well, we just cannot wait. And after the break, we will be joined by 1993 world champion. You can see all the fans that have come out tonight and cues back to the A1 and you were part of it Sam Malenko. I was I, nervous about you getting here on time. Yeah I was doing my best but I tell you what the traffic I don't want to be a poor sport and go around them because what can I do wave my Eurosport flag outside or what? I would have demanded so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you I met a, I met a, a grand old lady here a lovely lady she's she says she's been coming for 76 years never seen a crowd as big as this it's amazing. It is it's, it's just um, I said it's Kelvin but the atmosphere is really electric 
think it feels tangible. And what are your thoughts about this massive encounter? I just think that this is the perfect ingredients for one of the best shows we're going to see in a long time. And the weather's perfect, so there's no excuses whatsoever. Both teams are really up for it. I walked around the pits, and the mechanics are all up for it. Everybody is paying to every little bit of attention to all the details that they need to do, and that's great. How do you see it going? Well, I, I'm, I'm going to kind of go with Kelvin a little bit on this with Peterborough's home track advantage right now. But I do know that uh, Limo's boys are up for it. They have that record of beating them twice. So, you know, who, I don't want to sit on the fence, but at the same time, i got to go with the favorites of the home, yeah. home team. And they've beaten them twice, yeah. double figures as well. Yeah. It's got to give them confidence. Yeah, I mean, I tell you what, this is going to be a heck of a show, and there's going to be a lot of people here going to be able to watch it. But the crowd, I think, are here from both sides. So who's going to be cheering the loudest? That's what's going to come down and to the right. And we want it to go down to the wire as well, don't we? We want it to go to Heat 15. I'm sure it will. There's going to be some um, mix ups a little bit, I said, with some of the writers. I, I, Craig Cook, I think, is a great writer. I don't know how he's going to be performing under the pressure right here, but he's also got to be able to defend himself when he goes to Glasgow when they start working in the championship. So is this a test run for him? Is Villity? Who knows? Who knows? He won. That's what we do know is coming up. And your commentators, Calvin Tate and first, Nigel Pearson. Thank you, Abby. Yes, delighted to be here and delighted to still have a voice after Monday night. Uh, it really was sensational stuff at Bellevue. And this, a huge, huge night, and you can just sense it. Uh, this place is absolutely packed out at the East of England Arena, and it is delicately poised with Bellevue on 46 points. Peterborough's 44, and Bellevue haven't won the league title since 1993, and Peterborough Panthers last won it 15 years ago, back in 2006, when Mark Lemon wrote for Reading and the opposing side that night. Craig Cook comes in for yeah. Eric Ostergaard in blue here after the Panthers lost Hans Anderson after that crash on Monday evening and Craig Cook, a former Bellevue rider and uh, will he be up for the challenge tonight? He could be a key man for the Peterborough Panthers kill. He will be Nigel he's uh, on his night, he's a top class rider and um, it's a, a big responsibility. Mark Lemon looking on of course will be a little disappointed to have only won by two points in uh, a Monday night's meeting, but um, this is a lovely, it's beautifully poised coming into the second leg. First race of grand final, leg two. Here we go, Richie Worrell off the inside in yellow for Bellevue. Then it's Craig Cook, rider replacement for Ulrich Ostergaard in blue for Peterborough. Dan Bewley, gate three in white, and Michael Palmtoft with that hand injury mm. off the outside in red. In 2019, the last league season that took place, Peterborough finished bottom of the league. They finished top this year. Now they're looking to seal the deal. Or will Bellevue, who finished third, go on to secure their first league title since 1993? Settle down. Enjoy the night with us. Live Premiership Grand Final Speedway. And they're away first time of asking who's going to get there. Bellevue have made a beauty. Absolute beauty. Richie Wall in yellow. And Dan Bewley is in white. Being chased hard here by Craig Cook in blue. Michael Palm toft off the pace right now. This would extend Bellevue's lead to six points in the this. A dream start right now for the Bellevue Aces. Yeah, they've used uh, gates one and three perfectly there, Nigel. They've got away. Richie Wall certainly got away nicely from the inside and he's looking good hugging that white line beauty's on the outside he's a little bit vulnerable because craig cook is charging up the inside cook now comes through in the second place beauty down the outside now michael popped off oh they're at it again nigel second time of asking popped off gone from fast to second cook into third place with beauty being relegated to the back pumped now off pumped off on the inside of Worrell. wow this is great speedway. We're picking up where we left off on Monday night. We are. Not like a 5 1 for Bellevue, but it's a three apiece. And Craig Cook and Michael Palmtop charge through for Peterborough. That looked like a dream start for Bellevue. But my goodness me, this Peterborough side are made of stern stuff. And if you question whether Craig Cook, who is a guest rider tonight, might be up for the occasion, I think he's just answered that question. How does Michael Palmtoff do it? I don't know. He's got two broken fingers in his left hand, and he was out of it in the first lap. Came charging through and very nearly won the race. But so uh, Richie Worrell just hanging on. Yeah, Richie Worrell, the winner with Michael Palmtoff second, and uh, Craig Cook in third place. Brilliant stuff. Wow. Uh, from the Peterborough boys in the end there. But what about Richie Worrell? 
what a start for him. Superstar from the inside from Worrell, and that's where he stays. Bewley was vulnerable because in this early part of the meeting, the inside line, and I mean right on the white line, was definitely the fastest run. And Bewley was there trying to team ride alongside his mate, but he couldn't really do. He was kind of trapped there because Craig Cook was lurking all the time in third place. And eventually, Bewley decides to go in that no-man's land that I pointed out in my track report. And as a consequence, he is then extremely vulnerable and gets forced to the back with that stunning move from Palm Toft, who took the opportunity with both hands, albeit one of his hands is a little bit dodgy. He came through straight into second place. Worrell hanging on out in front. But once again, great character and determination being showed by the Panthers. Fantastic ride from Richie Waddell. Superb effort, just back from injury recently, of course, Richie, and enjoying that heat number one. What a start it was from him, and you wouldn't have thought that Dan Bewley would finish last in the first race. He really has been the golden boy of Bellevue's season, yeah. Dan Bewley. He was a little bit unfortunate there, night. His position in the race, where he was just on the outside of Warren, if Warren had allowed him to come round, that may have helped out, and they probably would have hung on for a 5-1, but on such a big night like this, it's never easy. And uh, as a consequence, it ended up being a thrill. Bjarni Pedersen out here, his final season in Speedway, wherever. And uh, can he finish on a big high tonight? I picked him out as uh, the Panthers' man to watch tonight. He's been pretty good at reserve so far, Nige. He has. Um, not quite as powerful as Hans Andersen was, but he's still done a pretty good job, Bjarni, for uh, Peterborough. And what a way to bow out. Uh, farewell season, of course, mainly known for his time at the Paul Pirates. But what a fantastic campaign he's had yeah. in his farewell season with uh, the Peterborough Panthers here. We're up to the second rate of the night. And uh, this man, Jordan Palin, had a really good night on Monday at Bellevue. He knows that track well, though. He's had a couple of poor scores here at Peterborough this year. Let's see how he goes. Second race of the night, Bjarne Pedersen off the inside in red. Then it's Tom Brennan. Gate two in white, then it's Jordan Paling, gate three in blue for Peterborough. Off the outside in yellow, Jai Etheridge for Bellevue. Three points apiece, so still Bellevue shade it with 14 races of 30 sure. remaining by a couple of points. Yeah, Jordan Paling actually started the meeting on Monday really well and uh, did uh, sterling work actually for the Panthers and was one of their star men in the early part of the meeting. Faded a little bit towards the end. I do believe he's had a crash this week where there was a little bit of concern about him, but uh, he's here fighting fit and raring to go. Gates one and three for the Panthers here. Bjarni Pedersen, the experienced Danish man on the inside. Away from the start they go. And Bjarni Pedersen has made a nice one here in the red helmet colour for Peterborough. Paling's at the back right now, so Bellevue packing the mind of placings, and that will do then. They've got to look for each other here. The Bellevue boys, Tom Brennan in white, giant rich in yellow, and perhaps not mess each other up if you like. Jordan Paling will have a go for Peterborough in the blue helmet, but Bjarni Pedersen looking pretty commanding here. Yeah. So far down that back straight. No real surprise. He had the inside gate, and he's taken full advantage of that. He knows uh, where he needs to be riding, and that's on the inside. And all four of them actually are pretty much riding exactly the same line. Got to say, Palin's at the back, just missing out out of gate number three. And as you say, for the aces, a three alls will do okay. It's still a slim margin, of course, it's only two. Into the last lap, Bjarni Pedersen riding strongly out in front. The Bellevue aces, though, doing good work in second and third. Yeah, that will preserve their advantage by a couple of points. Palin's coming on strong at the back. Palin's having a go, but he's just going to tail off at the end. Great effort by Jordan Palin at the back, but it just wasn't quite enough for him. Really worked hard to try and put the pressure on Jai Etheridge, but he just ran out of time there yeah. uh, towards the finish line. But a good ride from Bjarni Pedersen, but Palin gave it absolutely everything at the back. Yeah, super stuff from Bjarni Pedersen, and I'm expecting more of that. They're going to need more of that if they're going to win this championship. But uh, he settled down in front and gently eased away from Brennan in second. But uh, once again, just the three all. The Panthers need a heat advantage to get back right back in the thick of the action. Yep, still a couple of points in it. Six apiece on the night. Pedersen, Brennan, Etheridge, and that's a two-point lead. 52-50 for Bellevue Aces. It's an even break, but as you get to the first corner, that inside gate, that uh, run on the inside there just helps you out. Unfortunately for young Jordan Palin, from the Panthers' perspective, he wasn't able to join his experienced teammate. Brennan and Jai Etheridge are right there. Etheridge from gate four does quite well here, actually, to make sure that he relegates Palin to third. It got tight towards the end. 
and with Palin having a real blast around the outside in the last corner. But there we're looking at the silky style of uh, Bjarni Pedersen, who will be pleased with his opening ride and the three points on the board. Yeah, Bjarni Pedersen then, three points to his name. He'll need to continue that tonight because they do rely mm. heavily on a high-scoring reserve. And uh, that'll encourage they Peterborough. They do, and he, he has kind of upped his game. He was probably riding a little bit out of form prior to dropping down into the reserve berth. And I think there was a lot of talk about the fact that that was going to be the undoing for the Panthers. But I must say, since we've been watching him riding there, he's actually been um, performing pretty well. Apart from the fact when he touched the tape when he first came <laughs> out here in the semi-final. But that night, he actually ended up being rider of the night. We're looking at Craig Cook. This is his second ride of the night. This is actually his program ride. He was a rider replacement in uh, the heat, the opening race. So he's out here. He knows the track now. He's got a feel for it. He'll be settling down. He would have been nervous. Big responsibility coming in on a big night like this as a guest. You don't want to let the team down. So he'll be looking to do the business from gate number four this time. On board with Scott, Scott Nichols, who had an unbelievable night on Monday in uh, Manchester at the National Speedway Stadium. It was fabulous stuff yeah. from Scott. Those four straight wins, the way he reeled those off sure. was, was brilliant. I think it's the best he's ever ridden there. You know, yes. I really do, and I was chatting to him earlier on, and uh, quite clearly he was um, really pleased. He didn't quite know where it came from, but sometimes <laughs> it's better not to overthink it too much. But uh, nonetheless, he was certainly their saviour, wasn't he? He really did lead the team by example. Charles Wright in yellow is a former Peterborough rider. Mark Lemon studying the programme, the Bellevue team manager looking at the race card and where he may rejig things. He's got to use rider replacement for Brady Kurtz, of course, and try and find the right rider for the right spot in the programme. Heat number three is Stevie Worrell, the skipper for Bellevue, off the inside in white, then it's Scott Nichols, gate two in blue. Charles Wright, who rode for Peterborough in 2019, he's off gate three in yellow. And Craig Cook, the guest for Hans Anderson for Peterborough, off the outside in red. Very close, six apiece on the night, and yep. a two-point advantage for the Aces on aggregate so far. Laurel's been going great guns. He really has uh, rediscovered his form in recent weeks. He's on the inside. He's making, been making great starts. Here we go. Well, he's not made a great start here. Scott Nichols off the inside. But what about that from Cook? Swoops around the outside. That is magnificent. Scott Nichols was left at the start there for Peterborough. Yeah. This is brilliant from the guest, Craig Cook. Second place in white is Steve Worrell. Third in yellow is Charles Wright. We're on board with Scott Nichols at the back of the race here. And he needs to find a way through if he possibly can. He's trying the inside run, as you can see here. The lead, though, is with Craig Cook riding beautifully. Yeah. And he's up for it tonight, Kel. Yeah, brilliant stuff. He's had a taste of the track already, and he looked like he settled down. Nichols is pushing really hard at the back. We're on board with him once again, trying to get the better of uh, Charles Wright. Inside, outside, the captain of the Panthers is working overtime. Cook is really good out in front. He's coming under pressure from Warren. Oh. Look at Nichols. Nichols coming on strong. Oh, that's tight. Awfully tight. Rod is out of control and Nichols is through. Well, that was fortunate that Charles Wright didn't get in deeper trouble there. And Peterborough have just struck a race advantage. Craig Cook, second place in white was Steve Worrell. And third for Scott Nichols, who was rewarded for his persistence there, albeit that he forced a mistake from Charles Wright. But that was superb from Craig Cook. Yeah. Look at the passion and commitment. He's up for this tonight. And Craig Cook with a race win in heat number three. And a pass for Scott Nichols, cashing in on a mistake from Charles Wright. Yeah, and that mistake was as a consequence of pressure from Nichols. He forced it out of uh, Charles Wright and capitalised. And it was a very useful point that he picks up to get the heat advantage. Cook out in front, you're right, Nigel. He was really quick. Cook the winner, Waddle second, Nichols third. That's a 4-2 to Peterborough. They now lead by two in the aggregate scoreline. It's lock level, 54 points apiece. Yeah, he missed the start completely there. You can on board camera. He didn't want to see that too many times. Uh, from the point of view that uh, he didn't let the clutch go at the right time or the bike <laughs> just didn't go to the first turn. Excellent observation, yeah. Calvin. Um, uh, yeah, you missed that one, mate. Um, but um, no, <laughs> Craig Cook's out in front. He didn't miss it. He made a smash in first corner. Steve Worrell gets going. I'll tell you what, he doesn't really get dropped. Very good race between Nichols and uh, Charles Wright. And here's the Ooh. moment where Charles Wright really does get it very wrong indeed. In actual fact, from my position, I didn't really appreciate quite how dramatic that was. 
We'll see this again. Very tight indeed with Nichols almost up the inside. Unbelievable action there. You're almost on board with Charles Wright there. We're actually on board with Scott Nichols, but by crikey, that was tight. But as I reiterate, that man picks up three points, but Nichols the one, and uh, that enables them to level this uh, grand final up. So the guest coming in for Hans Anderson has got four points from his opening two rides, and he's doing a good job. Well, Charles Wright, I mean, he's very fortunate there. Do you remember, did you ever play when you were younger, Buckaroo? Yeah. Remember that game? Yeah. Well, Charles Wright reminded me of Buckaroo there. Yeah, very similar. Very similar, but uh, he stayed on. Home? He did what, stay, did, did he you stay play Buckaroo on. when you were younger? No, and I'm doing it on a 500cc methanol burning <laughs> machine without any brakes. I'll tell you what, that's, a, that's for over 18s only. Um, but Charles Wright is certainly a little fortunate to have stayed on there. He'll be frustrated as well because uh, he gave that point away. And Nichols, as you rightly said, he kind of worried him into it, didn't he? He just kept persistently coming. Bjarni Pedersen just now um, preparing himself. I think there's a change coming on here. Well, Dan Bewley is riding replacement for Brady Kurtz here. So, uh, Mark yeah, well, I think it looks bringing like... Bringing in the um, big guns early on. And Bjarni like Pedersen replaces Jordan Palin as well yeah, so in the blue helmet colour here. It's, yeah. I'll tell you what, this is so delicately poised. It would be no surprise if this, like back in 2006, if this goes down to 8.15. Yep. Yeah. Slightly different point scoring situation in um, 2006. We saw a huge turnaround that night, but right now, 54 points all. I agree with you, it could go all the way, and there's so little to choose between the two teams. There is some real determination about both teams, aren't there? You can see that in the efforts that are going on, but um, there's no doubt that uh, Panthers have done remarkably well to keep it so close so far. It did look like the Aces were going to run away with it after Heat 11 on Monday. But here we are after three races tonight and it's 54 points apiece. Chris Harris has been a smashing rider for the Panthers this year. He really has enjoyed a terrific season of Speedway and he's been riding out of his skin just of late. In number four it is then Jaya the Ridge off the inside in yellow for Bellevue. It's Bjarne Pedersen reserve substitute for Jordan Paling, gate two in blue for Peterborough. Dan Bewley comes in as a replacement for the injured Brady Kurtz, who's here tonight. Gate three white, and Chris Harris goes off the outside in red. What a legend that man is, Chris Harris. He's yeah. entertained so many. Brady Kurtz, we said he's here. There he is in the pits. Looks as nervous as the rest of the Bellevue boys. Well, I can understand it. In actual fact, he showed us the footage of that crash in the oh, Czech Republic horrible. where he got hit on the head and the, the helmet actually got destroyed. So a really nasty incident there in his first ride. And uh, he's frustrated, of course. He would have very much wanted to be part of this show tonight. Harris on the outside. Mark Lemon looking on. Tense times for both teams. Absolutely. Heat number four it is. And that's a great start from Jay Etheridge off the inside. And Bewley's with him. Real hard work now for Peterborough. This is brilliant from Bellevue. If Jay Etheridge can strike a blow here in yellow, that'll be a real bonus. The man at the back is Chris Harris, but Bjarne Pedersen trying the inside run now. Here comes Harris in red. Harris will try the outside run here. This is difficult early on in a meeting. Bellevue in a great position. Pedersen giving it his all, and you can be sure that Chris Harris will push every step of the way. Well, it's frustrating for Harris because Harris possibly is quicker than Pedersen, but he just can't find a way through. Jai Etheridge riding a very good line. Beauty's away. Beauty's got the three points in the bag. Pedersen working really hard in third place, desperately trying to get the better of Etheridge into the last lap. Jai Etheridge is really holding strong there in second place. Frustration for both Pedersen. Now, can he make it up the inside? He's done it. Bjarne Pedersen forcing his way into second Not place. Quite sure. Oh, Etheridge has responded. What a ride! What a wow. brilliant ride from the youngster. Well, Jai Etheridge simply superb there. And the Mancunian Mexicans that have made the journey en masse down from Manchester tonight. Absolutely delighted with that. That is the type of race result that wins league titles. Dan what a ride. White finished last at his opening ride. And what about Jai Etheridge there? That's a huge result. Their reserves weren't at it on Monday, really. But Jai Etheridge has delivered the goods, and it looked as though Pedersen was going to get the better of him there. But Etheridge stood firm. Mm. Bewley, Etheridge, Pedersen, 5-1 to Bellevue. They lead 13-11 on the night, and that is a terrific result for Bellevue Aces. It is indeed, I agree with you. It looked for all intents and purposes that finally Bjarni Pedersen had forced his way through, but 
it's uh, got to give Jai Etheridge an awful lot of credit here. He rode so strongly to then respond away from the tapes. And uh, it's all about the aces at this very early stage of the race with Beauty coming round the outside and Jai Etheridge in second place. The sense that Harris will be frustrated in the pits here. He was sort of trapped at the back and he just could not land a blow. Here's the moment I thought that Pedersen was going to seal the deal of second place. But look at Etheridge. Shows you how much they want it, these boys, doesn't it? Just wound it on and then got the better of him. There's the moment. Just got his nose in the front into second place, rather, just momentarily. But Etheridge had the answers and held on for second place. And as you rightly say, Nigel, a 5-1 is uh, what it's all about. And hanging on to it there, that's a terrific result for the Aces. Great start for Bellevue here. They are four points ahead on aggregate now. Peterborough need to get their gating gloves on as a matter of urgency. Four races gone. Welcome back to the grand final. Four heats down. Four points on aggregate separate these two sides at the moment as Sam Malenko joins us. Sam, there seems to be commitment coming from left, right and centre. The pressure these riders are putting on each other is um, something quite extraordinary. Heat three epitomised there by Scott Nichols putting pressure on Charles Wright. Yeah, there's no doubt the, the riders now have all had a ride and some too. And the track conditions, I wouldn't say, are favouring any real racer. It's down to what's happening on the gate. Well, here's Scotty. He is a true racer. So he knew that he had to bully his way into that position right there. And luckily, Charles Wright stayed up. That could have been a little bit different. But at the end of the day, Scott knows what it's Get the points. He knows how to put the pressure on his opposition and did exactly what he needed to do in that race. Riders on the way out for Heat 5. Let's join Calvin and Nigel. Yes, thanks, Abby. Up to Heat number 5 we go, and it's very much advantage. Bellevue right now, 28 years since their last top flight title in British Speedway, a world famous club, of course, but there's still 11 races to go for Peterborough to turn this around. It's only a four-point advantage, 1-5-1, one, one, and it wipes that out. So, up to heat five we go. Craig Cook, it's a poor start. start from him, wasn't it, first yeah, time? Having a good look at the gardening that's going on there with the on-board camera. Handy to have an on-board when they're gardening on the start line. Just, Just explain to, to the casual viewer, because we'll have a few tonight, why are they doing that, Kel? Well, because they're packing the dirt down, trying to get as much grip and the best possible place to start from so the tyre can really fire you forward to make the start so you can get your nose in front. And uh, often you'll see the guys using the steel shoe, which is on the bottom of your left foot, to make the start so you can get your nose in front. And uh, often you'll see the guys using the steel shoe, which is on the bottom of your left foot, to pack the dirt down. It's quite handy. There's Hans Anderson, who's looking a little second-hand after that nasty incident on Monday. But here's the lineup. Heat number five, Craig Cook off the inside then for Peterborough. Gate two, yellow, Richie Waddle, winner of the opening race. He's off gate two. Scott Nichols, gate three, blue. And then Dan Bewley, the Bellevue number one, is off the outside. Who's going to get there first? Waddle's made a decent start. But watch out for the fan who's put Dan Bewley around the outside. There he goes. Dan Bewley, absolutely sensational in the white helmet colour. Scott Nichols is in blue. Craig Cook is in red in third place. It's a three all as things stand. And once again, this will do Bellevue very nicely. Dan Bewley leads the way in the white helmet colour and Richie Waddle's not done yet to the back. He will push hard, but this three all will maintain a four point advantage on aggregate. Tough for the first, Aces. Yeah, tough first corner, no question about it. Cook was pushing wide to stop the run from Bewley, but Bewley wouldn't be held back and he's hit the front. At the same time, Nichols then came through into second place and that relegated Cook back to third place. And Worrell, Worrell is coming on strong out the back. They're going to have to keep their eyes on him. Looking like a threat at this stage. Keep your eyes on Wall. Wall is working Cook. hard, isn't he, Nige? Yep, looking super quick here. He's in the outside run. Can he get the better of Craig Cook? Not quite. That is another good result for Bellevue Aces. Dan Bewley leading the way in white. He's been fantastic all season for Bellevue. And still very, very fortunate to have the talent of this young man in the league, I would suggest, because he's certainly ruffled a few feathers in the Polish Extra Liga. Sure. And he's a great young talent, Dan Bewley, who has come through the system from the National Development League into the uh, Championship and now into the Premiership. And Dan Bewley, who has come through the system from the National Development League 
into the uh, championship and now into the premiership at top level with Dan Bewley winning the race. Scott Nichols second, Craig Cook third and Richie Worrell at the back. A three apiece, Bellevue lead by two on the night and they are four up on aggregate. Yeah, Dan Bewley after a poor opening ride where he got bullied out of it actually, got relegated to the back really has turned on the style in his last two outings and he's just roared around the outside of the opposition back straight for the opening lap he comes through into second place and cook was just momentarily re relegated to third place this was the action really with warrell really working overtime in the uh, outside there in the yellow helmet color but he just ran out of time and that outside line hasn't quite burst into life at this stage of the meeting dan Bewley, absolutely a narrow margin 62 58 but so far so good for mark lemon's side heat six coming up we await news on who's going to replace brady kurtz in the white helmet color as the rider replacement ride but class 16, rider in beauty class yeah, rider yeah. such a good looking kid when he's in front as well the style that's an understated kid doesn't get too excited but uh, there's no doubt that he's got a huge future and uh, i'm looking forward to seeing him riding in the grand prix in the upcoming years he's but tonight the substitutes for next year isn't he yes he is and it wouldn't surprise you yeah. he would have a chance yeah. to have a ride in the grand prix in 2022 and hopefully that will be the case um uh, we're waiting on the rider replacement ride here yeah chris harris is in blue and jai etheridge is in white so it's michael palmtoff chris harris jai etheridge and tom brennan well be interested say... to see the tapes here because it has been flagged up from the officials in the pits that maybe not necessarily going up evenly. Well, it did then. It did then. So hopefully that will continue. <laughs> um, but um, it's not great when they go up lopsided. And but you the fact that they tested it there, Cal, suggests there has been a complaint from the pits. Quite possibly, yeah. They wouldn't have done it otherwise. So, yeah, you're right. But at... Just so. hearing that Harris has changed his bike. Yes. Seems to do that every night, actually, recently. <laughs> and then quite often changes back. I know he did on Monday night. Just so. hearing that Harris has changed his bike. Yes. Seems to do that every night, actually, recently. <laughs> and then quite often changes back. I know he did on Monday night. Um, but that this man was superb in his opening ride. Palm Toft, they're going to need him. They just need a hand in these early... Um, heat. Um, there's plenty of time to go. No time to panic, of course, because it's still very tight, this contest. But uh, they are going to just need a little bit more, maybe just a bit sharper away from the tapes, and that would help a lot. Yeah, Bellevue have won here twice this year already, of course. And you can see, you can see right. why. The liking of this track is obvious. Mm. The gardening continues across the starting grid. Heat number six it is. See, they probably don't, don't do gardening at home. But they're quite happy to do gardening when they're being paid for it. <laughs> yeah. Respect here. Harris on his uh, spare bike. Can he do the business? You line up then for heat six. Rider replacement is Jai Etheridge in for Brady Kurtz off the inside gate. Michael Pantoff, gate two in red for Peterborough. Reminder, racing with broken fingers. Tom Brennan, gate three in yellow. And then it's Chris Harris who comes in for Ulrich Ostergaard. He's off the outside in the blue helmet wow. colour. Big heat number six here. Well, on paper, Nigel, this is looking very favourable to the home team. Got to say, Brennan and Etheridge up against Harris, and uh, Mark. Got to say, Brennan and Etheridge up against Harris, and uh, Michael Palm Top who won his opening race. You've got to believe that this is an opportunity for the Panthers to get right back in, in it. And these are the chances you really do need to take. You can ill afford to slip up when you've got an opportunity like that the showground tonight it's a good start from michael pantoft in the red helmet color but what can be done now by chris harris in blue he's charging hard around the outside the fans are on the feet in the home stand chris harris has really struggled from the start tonight but he's really in the mix here now here on for him to try and pass tom brennan oh yes peterborough 5-1 at the inside he goes oh my word that is vintage chris harris they're on a 5-1 peterborough and this would give them the lead on the night and level it on aggregate well, it looked good on paper before the race. I've got to say that Harris has had to work awfully hard. Once again, he hasn't got his trapping hand on tonight. Michael Palmtoff fast out in front. 
He's going to go back to back. He wins for himself. But what an effort from Chris Harris to come through in his second place. And once again, Nides, this tie, it's game on. What a noise from the main stand here at the East of England Arena. What an atmosphere. Absolutely stunning here. And Michael Palmtoff with broken fingers in his clutch hand, his left hand. What a hero. With broken fingers, <laughs> has just scored five points out of a possible six from his opening two rides on the night. He is a hero, and it gives Peterborough the lead on the night. But it is level after six races on aggregate at 63 points apiece. What a grand final we've got, folks. We have indeed. On his first race, he came second. But I'll tell you one thing, he definitely won that one. He's six. And he won it very comfortably. And he was a heroic uh, uh, effort once again from Palm Toft. Yep, Michael Palm Tree, the winner. Second place, Chris Harris. Sorry, Palm Toft. And for, that was <laughs> deliberate, by the way. And Tom Brennan third. <laughs> Here we see it again, Nigel. And uh, Michael Palm Toft, who came second in his first race, not first. Um, uh, <laughs> I'll forgive you. <laughs> he's out in front in this one. He's being chased hard by Tom Brennan. Got to say that uh, Palm Toft actually jumped very well here. Harris has made a poor start and had to work very hard, actually. But it was one of those uh, tenacious rides once again. That 100% effort from Bomber Harris. He gets round the outside of Etheridge and then he chops to the inside. Brennan, actually, as he went by, Brennan Harris. He actually gets in a bit of trouble, the youngster Tom Brennan. Watch it in a minute. I think he lifts quite violently. We're seeing it again. This really was close quarter stuff. Wheel to wheel action with Harris coming on strong. He was just irresistible here. He was just going to watch this. I think he lifts here any minute. Yeah, just there momentarily. Got himself in a little bit of trouble, but that man wasn't in trouble. He won comfortably out in front and Palm Toft five out of two. I'll tell you what, once again showing terrific form in the grand final. Yeah, it's fair to say it's an injury hit Peter Beside. Worries over Palm Top. Worries after Jordan Palin after crashing at Leicester on Tuesday night for Scunthorpe. And uh, of course the Hans Anderson situation as well. But the heat number seven is coming up. There'll be a, a little bit of extra time because Chris Harris has got two on the trot here, so he'll be allowed extra time. Bjarne Pedersen and it's Steve Worrell and Charles Wright. It's funny, you know, that track where, when I went out on the track um, uh, to, uh, walk. The, um, uh, the outside looks like it should have a fair amount of grip in it, but it isn't really working yet, and that's a, a little bit of a surprise. So, eight, number seven coming up, and let's head down to the pits with Steve Brandon. Thanks, Nigel. I'll step in to talk to these fine gentlemen. Hands, I'll talk to you first. Pretty tough watching a final, sir. It is, um, like I say, it's very frustrating because you really want to be out on the track fighting the, the fights they, the boys do, but... You know, I'm running up and down trying to give a bit of advice, you know, have an eye on the track, does it change, the riders suddenly go on the fence, could he go on the curve? Uh, you know, it's, it's a team effort, but the boys have to deliver on the, deliver on the track. It must be good advice for Michael. I'm not going to put you in the fence, but I'm going to barge past and we're going to have a quick word with Michael. Michael, Michael, can I just grab you, sorry? Um, five points, two rides, can't go too much better for you tonight. No, uh, I would have liked another point in my first heat. No, we can't complain. Um, it's tough tonight, but we'll keep fighting. How much can your hand repair itself in two and a half or three days? I'm assuming it's not too much better than Monday. Um, I rode Tuesday too, and it wasn't too good. Um, but it, the track is a bit easier to ride here. Uh, I don't have to use too much power in my hand. Um, and it, it, it gets better and better every day. So. I saw you just lean over to Chris, who's got two on the trot. He's coming out again now. Communication for you guys as a team tonight. Keep talking, really important. Yeah, it is. Uh, again, I say it again. It's like the track is different compared to what we normally run it, and, and it's been different all year. So it's like having an away track as your home track, um, which is really hard. So we need to keep keep getting inputs from each other. Thanks for your time. Kelvin, this is um, this has got going a long way written all over it. Yeah, indeed it has. And I've uh, got to say that uh, an interesting comment there from Michael Palm Toft and the fact that the track is keeps uh, changing, that is not ideal. When you have your home track, you quite like to have consistency. And the track looked well prepared. I must say there's nothing, you know, um, uh, awkward about the track. It looks fast, it looks smooth, but um, possibly a little bit drier than they're accustomed to. Chris Harris, the problem is nothing to do, well, I would say that poor starting from yes. Harris tonight, <laughs> isn't it, really? That's the problem. 
and uh, you've got to say that they've got to rectify that if they want to win this tie and we've got Stevie Worrell coming out here with the number three on his back and um, he has been making really good starts a uh, little bit of chat going on between Steve Lawson Steve Lawson the man in the uh, who's just chatting there to Mark Lemon good rider himself Steve of course bit of a hero up at Glasgow back in the day and he looks after Dan Bewley when he's riding in the UK doing a fine job but um, yeah good 5-1 for the home team in the previous race Nige that levels it all up um, can they gain any momentum from that now with Harris out in back-to-back -back races he's from the inside this time So here we go with heat number seven then. It is quite a meeting here. Grand final speedway in the Premiership in front of a packed house. Chris Harris off the inside in red. Can he finally make a gate? Steve Worrell goes off gate number two. Has been in good form of late for Bellevue in white. Uh, Jordan Palin comes in for Bjarne Pedersen here in the blue helmet colour as uh, Rob Lyon juggles his uh, reserves once again. And Charles Wright off the outside in yellow. Uh, got a bit of a tangle got a bit of a tangle in his opening ride well it was a tight moment crash. it was a tight moment with Nichols, wasn't it and he kind of got worried out of it and got a little bit out of shape he's going from the outside gate clearly rob lyon is wanting to get jordan palin's rides done um, because potentially it's bjarni pedersen that could well be a very busy man tonight that's for sure so a lot of pressure on harris on the inside this time yep a very nervy edgy start there and peterborough have made a beauty 5-1, Jordan Palin is Palin. Harris right now. What a start for the youngster. Watch out for Charles Wright in yellow. He knows every inch of this track. He rode here for a season in 2019. Harris, though, is looking over his shoulder. Now we're going to see some team riding. We've got Chris Harris up the inside. Jordan Palin is in blue. And now they have to work hard to block out the tenacious challenge of Charles Wright, who will wipe it on and give it everything. But Peterborough on a 5-1 right now. Well, Jordan Palin coming in here has done a super job so far. Harris has looked after him. There's no question about that. Charles Wright up the inside. Oh, that's such a shame for Harris. Harris now responding. Brilliant stuff from Harris to come back at Charles Wright. Wright hanging on for second place. Worrell's out the back. Palin, the youngster, he's out in front. Can he do the business from there? Because Charles Wright is hunting him down. Yeah, I think Charles Wright might just run out of time because that is a stunning win for the youngster, Jordan Palin. Wow. And you're saying Rob Lyons trying to use his right up. Wow, he's just won well, heat think, number seven. I think that was the original plan. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, he's just had a Brucey bonus there, Knights, because Jordan Palin has done a marvellous job to win that race. A Brucey bonus because Rob Lyon played his cards right. Indeed. <laughs> Sorry. OK, OK, we forgive you. We forgive you. But Jordan Palin delights the home crowd, takes everybody by surprise, including myself, and rides a stormer, failed to score first time out. The boys are on the tag. Rob Lyon is delighted with the youngster. Wow. Palin rode really well on Monday. He produces a stunning ride in Heat 7 there. Fantastic stuff from the British youngster, Jordan Palin. Second place, Charles Wright. Credit to Charles. Great ride yeah. to pass Chris Harris. Stevie Worrell at the back, 4-2. And now... this last week or so uh, with the premiership playoffs the grand final it has delivered and massive crowd shows that the interest there is still 
in this sport. It was a masterclass in team riding um, as far as the Panthers were concerned um, in Monday. We'll talk about that in a moment, but we've got a team meeting with Bellevue. They're two points behind on aggregate. What do you think is going on in that meeting? Well, I just think that Mark's telling his guys, look, you know, we're really close here. We don't want to lose anything right here. When you can help your rider out, do it. They just watched a perfect example of Chris Harris coming out of the gate number one, looking over for his rider. Straight to the outside is his rider. You can see you have a quick look right there to his right. His rider's right along with him. Uh, Rob Limes made that change. They moved the reserve around and took Bjarni Pedersen out of this race and put uh, Jai in there, and he did a great job to go out there. Now Chris's job right now is just to keep him a gap so he can let him have some air to do what he wants to do, and that, that sacrificed him, uh, his points right there because he knew that he wanted to be on that racing line out there where Jay's at, but um, it's just a matter of, you know, when the riders are on him, they're on them. You can't cover all the grounds. The track's not typical right now. There's not a big dirt line out there, and the inside line's really tough for these guys. So I'm sure that uh, Mark Lemmy would have been sharing some of that knowledge to say he has been a racer. You just got to look for what's out there, guys, and go, do your best and stay together. Okay, Sam, thank you. Let's go to Heat 8 and your commentators, Calvin and Nigel. Thank you, Abby. Heat number eight it is, and Bjarne Pedersen comes in for Jordan Paley. Once again, Rob Lyon switching his substitutes, uh, switching his reserves. Bjarne Pedersen off the inside in blue. Gate number two is Jai Etheridge in yellow for Bellevue. And it's Michael Palmtoft in for Uri Kostigar in the uh, gate number three position. And uh, off the outside in white, Richie Waddle for the Aces. 23-19 in favour well, of the Peterborough Panthers. Indeed it is, Nigel. I just wonder whether he was tempted, Rob Lyon, to keep Jordan Palin in because <laughs> he rode so well in, there in the previous race. But here Bjarni Pedersen goes from the outside. That's Mark Lemon, Rob Lyon, tense times these. Fans as well tense on the edge of their feet. Such a tight contest, just two points in it on aggregate now with the home team, the Panthers, just edging in front. Real dramatic stuff, this. This is proper sport. Speedway at its very best. And all of a sudden, we're getting down to the midpoint. Three-quarter point, effectively over two legs. Here we go, heat number eight. Who holds their nerve? Yeah. Heat number eight it is. Oh, naughty, naughty at the star line. I tell you what, Bjarni Pedersen could have blown it there. Well, well, well. There was movement everywhere. I was looking to the inside, actually. And, I think there was um, movement in we're gate looking three at, as well. Uh, the rider in the yellow helmet colour. Tofty was moving. Oh no, it is the rider in yellow that touched the. I tell you, Bjarni Pedersen was lucky as well there, you know. Yep. But I agree with you. That was a very untidy start. Christina Turnbull probably is going to exclude Jai Etheridge here. Well, that could bring Tom Brennan in as a replacement. We're just waiting for. But there was movement like... everywhere, wasn't there? Yeah, it was shocking, really. I'm surprised we haven't had more than this tonight with what's at stake, to be honest. Did Biani move first? Biani moved first, and that unfortunately then dragged uh, Jai Etheridge in, which he'll be very frustrated about. We often see that's the case. A warning, a warning for Pedersen. We're just waiting for an exclusion light. He will be excluded, Jai Etheridge, unfortunately. Um, Biani yes, Pedersen, he is. The he light's is. on yeah, now. That's confirming it now. So that will automatically, surely, bring Tom Brennan in. You'd do that rather than put Etheridge off 15, wouldn't you? You've got to. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, it's tough to pass here tonight. He's frustrated. I know he's frustrated for two reasons. The fact that he touched the tapes, but also the fact that he looked across uh, Bjarni Pedersen and uh, he moves first. Mark Lemon clearly just checking with Tony Steele there that uh, what was going on, but uh, Tom Brennan is already ready. So, um, you see, Mark's having a pop at Tony Steele, making his point, but that's like a football manager having a go at the fourth official. Yeah, it's just sheer frustration, big frustration, night. Yeah. yeah, the pressure's on. Tony Steele is actually the, is he the steward or the coordinator? He's, he's a kind of a coordinator, He's not I in think. charge of the meeting. No, he's not. No, no, but he's just making his point. He was yeah. the nearest official to yeah, have a go. So he was taking yeah, he was he got, it. He, yeah. got, uh, he got the full force there. Bjarne <laughs> Pedersen a little bit nervy on the start. And a bit of a chat with Rob Lyon. Um, uh, What's he saying? Got away with that one, he boss? He did get away. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he did get away with it because he was quite possibly the first one to move there. Yeah. Um, and that, as a consequence, made uh, Jai Etheridge roar into the tape. So 
Um, well, that was a shame for well, him. Well, the two minutes are on, and we are waiting clarification. I'm assuming. I'm assuming that um, they will put uh, Tom Brennan. Well, Brennan's in the tape. Is, yep, he's Brennan is just tape. coming up to tape. So there so we that are. That would suggest he is in the race. Yeah, so he's not just coming up there for a bit of fun, is he? He's, no. Uh, he's first at the tapes. Yeah, he's keen. So he's keen. He's very keen. <laughs> um, uh, Michael Palm Toft has ridden well. He's out here as well. So yep. got to say, on paper, on paper, it doesn't always work out. The home team once again look quite strong here. Richie Worrell and Tom Brennan, the aces, are going to have to come up with something special. Yes, frustration for Bellevue. Mm. Fine margins. And if Peterborough cash in here, then there's only seven heats remaining. And uh, it gets even more tense from a Bellevue perspective. But yeah, a big race now, isn't it, in the context of the tie? Yep, it's on a knife edge. Absolutely on a knife edge. Sporting drama at the East of England Arena. Heat number eight restart. Bjarne Pedersen off the inside. He's got a warning by his name now because he was a little bit naughty at the start line just there. Tom Brennan comes in for Jaya the Rich in yellow off gate number two. Michael Palm Toft is in for Ulrich Ostergar off gate three in red. And Richie Waddle off the outside in white for Bellevue. A crucial race. I feel in the context of the meeting. I agree with you, Nigel. I think that, uh, you know, the home team have got their noses in front. They've got a good pairing here, a strong pairing here. who are riding well. And the ace is all of a sudden just finding it a little tough going. Trouble with the tapes here. Just a little bit of a running repair there. But um, no the pressure, ace, lads. The TV cameras are that's on. Right. You know, we, um, that's right. Um, uh, Any time today, fellas. Yeah, crack on. <laughs> um, but I just say two and four, can that work for them here with Richie Worrell, probably the more experienced of the two riders, Brennan at a gate two. But with Bjarne Pedersen on the inside, this is looking favourable, favourable before the tapes get fixed um, for the home team. Well, I do hope you're enjoying Grand Final Speedway with us tonight after the tough, tough times that everybody's been through over the last couple of years. Sport can certainly make a big difference and this grand final Monday night at Bellevue and tonight. We're ready, Nige. It's, uh, it's tense and it is pure sporting drama. Almost ready. Here we go for a really key heat number eight. Peterborough lead by four on the night. They lead by two on aggregate. Still eight races to go. Here is heat number eight. Grand final speedway. Second leg. It's tense. And away from the cell, what a start from Tom Brennan. But now Bjarne Pedersen tries the inside run. And Tom Brennan, the young reserve who's coming as a replacement, Jai Etheridge, has the lead here. This is sensational now for Bellevue Aces. Pedersen's going to hunt him down. Michael Pantoff's trying hard. Pedersen's going to try the outside run now. Here he comes, down that back straight. Has he got the speed? Brennan holding a clever line here for Bellevue. Is Tom Brennan going to be Bellevue's hero? As Bjarne Pedersen comes around the outside. Right now he's picked him off superbly. Oh yeah, Bjarne Pedersen, but frustration for Pantroff. Pantroff trapped on the inside. You've got to believe he's got more speed. Bjarne Pedersen's now hit the front. Worrell's out the back. Here comes Pantroff now. Switch it to the Get outside. Him. Done him. They've hit the front. Another five went on the cards for the home team, Nigel. And Bjarne Pedersen and Pantroff really piling on the pressure for the aces now. Third successive race advantage. 2-5-1 to the 4-2. So, so good for Tom Brennan there. But Peterborough, with Bjarne Pedersen and Michael Palmtop, have brought the fans to their feet in the home stand here. The back straight packed as well. Still early to celebrate. They're eight up on the night. They're six up on aggregate. And there's only seven races to go. But a six-point swing to be wiped out in two heats. Michael Palmtop, wow. broken fingers and all. He has been brilliant for Peterborough tonight. He's had three of his rides so far. That was a ride replacement ride for Ulrich Ostergaard. And there will be increased belief in the Panthers' camp now that they can win this league title. Pedersen and Palmtoff over Tom Brennan. Great effort by the youngster. 5-1. And on the night, 28-20, Peterborough lead. It's 72-66 on aggregate to the Peterborough Panthers. I just thought for a moment that this wasn't quite going to work out because uh, Tom Brennan makes a smashing start from gate number two. Terrific effort from him. 
for Palm Toft, who is clearly super quick tonight, was trapped on the inside with Bjarni Pedersen having to work very hard indeed. The track tonight just is a little slicker than we probably, or probably the riders, certainly the home riders, are accustomed to. And it took a little bit of time for Bjarni Pedersen to actually get the better of young Tom Brennan, who rides really strongly here for half the race. I thought Richie Worrell was going to come into the picture as well because it was taking Pedersen a, a little bit of time to get the better of Brennan. But once they do, then all of a sudden, you've got to believe that Palm Toff was able to get away from that inside line. He's so quick and he just comes roaring around the outside of the youngster. And uh, that's how it ends. And it's a big 5-1. Massive ride. Massive ride from Pedersen coming in with the switch with the reserves. It works a treat. He wins his second ride on the evening. And Palm Toft is flying for the Panthers this evening. He is indeed. It's a sensational performance from a man with broken fingers in his clutch hand as well. Bjarne Pedersen's up for this. What a way to bow out of uh, British Speedway this would be. Still hoping, by the way, down at Paul that they will be able to hold a... Uh, a farewell to British Speedway meeting for Biani where he had his glory days, but could what a he ride, add though. more silverware? I'll tell you what, he's a real lightweight as well, uh, Michael Palmtoft. Oh. And uh, when he gets going, he can generate a huge amount of speed, and we're seeing that on a regular occurrence. He's been in sparkling form throughout the year this season, and Michael Palmtoft is producing heroic displays time and time again. As we await news on heat number nine and who will go in white for Brady Kurtz, Let's head down to Steve Brandon with the Peterborough manager, Rob Lyon. Thanks, Nigel. Rob, the last three heats, 14-4 in favour of your team. That's a great bounce back, a great way to recover from an early sort of blip and pressure from Bellevue. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, we had to do it because they put us under a bit of pressure early on and, and Dan Bewley was out three out of the first five heats, I think it was. So, um, and the gates have gone our way a little bit. bit. And uh, Kelvin in commentary described Jordan Palin's ride as a bonus. He really stood up in that race. He did, yeah, and that's what he's capable of, and he's starting to do that more and more now. Um, and we know what the potential is of the boy, so uh, a terrific ride, yeah. How much is a team manager in this situation for, for a young rider like that is just building that confidence, giving him the ability to go out and just, I can beat these guys and getting on with it? It's belief and confidence in your own ability, isn't it? And he's got that in abundance, to be honest. Level-headed boy and... Uh, He's got a strong mentality, so he's capable of going out and doing that sort of thing. And, and some people would look at Speedway, and I'm not being disrespectful, but they go, oh, Speedway manager, quite an easy job. Tonight, for yourself and Mark, picking your way through this meeting is an incredibly tough task. Yeah, it's been like that since June, since poor old Ulrich got injured for me, but, you know, it is what it is. It's the, it's the, the job, and uh, we have to, you know, like you said, meander our way through all the rules and regulations and uh, make the best of every situation. And they've got rider replacing this one. Steve Worrell's coming in and why it doesn't get any easier, does it? No, no, no. It's a final. It's tough, you know. It's going to be tough and close. And uh, it's proving that way, and we knew that. We'll get this one away. Thanks for your time. Two yeah, minutes, well, please. Stevie Worrell How coming in in white, and uh, he'll be hoping to get his uh, clutch hand back going because um, just missed out last time, and he's been riding well. Um, there'll be... Uh, Rider replacement. Uh, no, we've got Craig Cook here as well for, of course, for Hans Anderson. Yes. Um, the late change with Anderson not being able to ride. We've got looking like uh, Scott Nichols as well. So a power pack lineup once again for the home team. They are in charge now, the home team. They really have turned it around. And we were just chatting while Steve was doing the interview, Nigel. You know, the last three races could be defining heats here for the Panthers. Yeah, I think the pressure is on Bellevue to hit back ASAP. Mm. Uh, but with Craig Cook riding well for the Panthers tonight, and if Scott Nichols gets his gating gloves on here off the inside gate in blue, uh, then Bellevue, I would suggest, if they concede a deficit in heat nine, I would suggest that Bellevue are in the category of in trouble because races start to miss out there. Uh, to, to, to run out. Running out, yeah, run you're out. right. Yeah. So this is another massive race. It's such dramatic stuff. You've been saying that this is sporting drama. You're spot on. It's indeed heat number nine coming up. They look tense in the pits, the Bellevue boys. Heat number nine it is. Scott Nichols, the skipper of Peterborough, off the inside gate in blue. Then it's Stevie Worrell, the uh, skipper of uh, Bellevue, off gate two in white. Gate three in red is a former Bellevue rider, Craig Cook. In tonight for Hans Anderson has ridden well so far. And Tom Brennan, the reserve rider off the outside in yellow. Huge race for Bellevue. The yep. pressure is on. The men from Manchester, led by that man, Mark Lemon. 
Yeah, at the very worst, they won a three all here. They could do with Worrell hitting the front. Fair play to Brennan. He did ride well last time, but you would say on paper here that he's going to be the possibly find it tough to get amongst the points. Cook's been going well. Nichols has been charging hard, as you would expect. But so Steve Worrell from the Aces, he's in gate number two. He's got to produce a real big start now. Oh, 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 Craig Cook's packed up at the star line and the red lights are on anyway. Now, there's a big decision to be made here because at the time of the stoppage, was you he could under argue power? that Craig Cook was not under power. This is a huge moment. Will Craig Cook be allowed back in the restart? Um, let's look at it now. Well, the reason why the race was pulled back was because of the starting offence. And it's a question then of whether the fact that Craig Cook was not under power. Look at his bike there. When he isn't under power, the bike's packed up and then the red light comes on. But he was under power when the tapes went up. All four riders are back because... Well, I think that's a little bit of good fortune for well, the team Well, when the tapes went up, though, Kel, yeah, the, the, well, the decision move, was made move, because yeah. of the start. He and at move. the start, his bike was under power. Yeah, agreed. So, yeah. But at the time of the stoppage, it wasn't. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so um, he's got away with that, and they were a little fortunate. Could the, <laughs> could it just be their night? Well, Things you never going know. Well, I'll tell you what, it was an awful start. I mean, they were all over the place. You can tell Scott Nich was nervous there. Yeah, Nichols was um, very eager to get on with it. And quite clearly, this is far from satisfactory because now you've got Craig Cook with a mechanical issue. Will he have to change bikes? Uh, the chosen bike was going well. What do you think the problem was? Any ideas, Cal? I've got no idea. It just ran out of puff immediately. I don't know if it was the chain breaking, but normally you see sparks fly when the chain breaks, particularly the front one. But um, it's almost yeah. impossible to know, Nigel. It's very difficult to know. Just another twist in what has been a, an unbelievable... We Couple are hearing maybe there were sparks, but if it was that, then it would be a chain breakage, possibly. And um, that may give us an indication of what went wrong. Well, the two um, minutes aren't on, so... Um, normally it's a chain break, normally. Yeah, the chain broke. And you know what? The two minutes aren't on, so are they being generous to Craig oh, Cook here? Chain. It's if a I was chain. Mark Lemon, if you I know was what? Mark Lemon, I'd be saying, you know get, what? get the two you know minutes what? on. That rear wheel is loose. Oh, wow. The rear wheel moved, and that's why the rear chain has come off. Crikey! You could see the wheel actually pointing. It did look like it moved quite violently there, so Craig Cook... So potentially he can use the same bike. Well, yeah, but there'll be damage there, and they're... Well, the two minutes is on now. Yeah, but now all of a sudden they'll be under a lot of pressure. They'll want a bike ready for him if they can't get that one ready in time. Well, I'm sure they'll know. Yeah, that's the spare one. Yeah, that's the spare one. That's a good move because Cookie's Craig, saying, Craig really ought to be on that bike yeah. because if it gets tight, they've got a minute and 45 seconds just less. Yeah. Just keeping the bike warm for Craig Cook. It looks like he's going to go off his second bike. Well, not yet. He's going to wait until probably a minute to go, yeah, I would think. 90 seconds. Well, but that wheel moved, Nigel, and that yep. enabled the tire. That's the reason why the chain came off, so the wheel couldn't have been tied. Well, well, well. There we are. Anyway, at least he's got a bike. They kind of got Cal. away with it. If they get out on the right bike, they would have got away with it. Yeah. They no, can't they get the bike no. ready. No, get on it. Yep. There you go. Yep, that's Willie, his dad, in the pits doing some sterling work, and well, never ideal this, Calvin. No, it, it isn't. Got to go out on his second bike. And Anderson having words, doing a great job as part of the team tonight even though he's not riding Hans Anderson will he do a practice start or will he just go straight round not ideal when you're coming out and you spare bike he knows it of course he knows it and he'll know almost every uh, minute detail about the bike but um, as I say once you've chosen a bike and you're comfortable on it you don't want to change it really but um, let's uh, this will go one of two ways he'll make a flyer and win the race easily or he'll, he'll struggle he'll a bit. last yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> but uh, no a um, uh, bit of extra drama for us there. As if we needed any more. But there we are. This is Speedway. This is heat number nine. Let's try again with heat number nine then. Scott Nichols off the inside in blue. Stevie Worrell he gets really two in white. He really does need to get up the tapes, you know, because he's going to run out. If this was Grand Prix, any minute now, he'd be excluded. Yeah, and uh, Craig Cook off gate three in red. And then it's Tom Brennan going off the outside gate in yellow. 
A reminder, 28-20, Peterborough lead, 72-66 on aggregate, but every race vital. Can Bellevue hit back here? Very tense start once again, and uh, the man in white, Stevie Worrell, has got there. The man in yellow, Tom Brennan, has made a good start. Blue, Scott Nichols charging through. Craig Cook coming through into third as well. Renault is on again here, and now Tom Brennan has that lead once again. This time, can he hold on to that lead? That's the big question. Nichols is after him. Cook holds third place, but here comes Steve Worrell battling hard here for Bellevue into third place. To 4-2 as it stands. What a race we've got on our hands here. Nichols is coming on strong. Fabulous effort from Tom Brennan from the outside game. Once again, Nichols is quick. The tape. Nichols is quicker. He's working hard in second place. Worrell has got the better of Cook. The spare bike. Here comes Nichols on the inside. No, Brennan hanging on. So tight for the lead. The youngster out in front. Brilliant speedway between the two. Oh, it's the old and the new. Fantastic with the effort respect. for Brennan. Yeah, fantastic move. Tom Brennan, superb for Bellevue. What that a is result. a wonderful, wonderful ride from the British youngster. Scott Nichols threw absolutely everything at him. Craig Cook finished last after Worrell came through. And that is just the boost that Bellevue needed. Yeah, what a result it was. Tom Brennan riding out of his skin there. A heroic effort from the youngster. He made a good start in the previous race, but then just got run out of it. But what an effort from Brennan out in front, under immense pressure from Nichols. Superb stuff. Yeah, Brennan the winner, Nichols second, Worrell was third, passing Craig Cook, 4-2 to Bellevue, six between them on the night, Peterborough lead by four on aggregate, and there are now only six races left to decide the 2021 Premiership champions. Tight first corner, Scotty Nichols shoving Warren out of the way, Cook is into third place just momentarily. But uh, Tom Brennan, what a start. What's this from the outside? Yellow helmet colour. That bike works a treat. Absolutely jet propelled from the outside. And this is a massive moment in the career of that young man. He's got a huge weekend ahead with the Speedway of Nations. And by golly, will he be 10 foot tall right now? Because this was such an important race. Got to say, Nichols threw everything at him. Just couldn't do anything about him. They were neck and neck. They were elbow to elbow, handlebar to handlebar. But Tom Brennan here, under so much threat from Nichols. Nichols almost throwing the bike at Tom Brennan. But Brennan recovers, keeps the composure, winds it on, and gets his nose back in front. That is a fantastic effort from the rising star. No wonder he's celebrating. Brilliant well stuff. Well done, Tom Brennan. That, that was excellent. superb. Brilliant stuff from the youngster. And he had Scott Nichols throwing everything at him there. Including the bike. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but he held out, kept his cool. That'll boost him for the rest of the night as well, for sure. Scotty's going to go out again here in the blue helmet, partnering uh, Michael Palm Toft in red for Peterborough. There'll be no thoughts of celebration or league titles in that grandstand right now. There's still six races to go and six heats in Speedway can be a very, very long period of time. Premiership Speedway, the grand final. Mark Lemon is the Bellevue team manager. Let's hear from him now with Steve Brandon. Six to go, Mark, four down. But uh, I've got to mention Tom Brennan there under immense pressure. It's a great ride from the young man. Yeah, we've seen such a, you know, a great sort of exposure of these rising stars this year. And I said, you know, tonight, Jordan Palin, Tom Brennan descend, fantastic. Need him to keep him rolling, though. I mentioned the score and we'll come back to it. Your grand final speedway, it's tough, isn't it? Yeah, and like we're not really looking at the scoreboard now. We're just focusing on what, what job we have to do and what's in hand. So we're working busy in the pits. We've got a, there's a, a few more races to go, so nothing's uh, written in the uh, history books yet. Don't throw the cliche at me. You're looking at it one race at a time. Surely not. I said basics at the start, Steve. I just you know, Again, you know, it, 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 there just is a different feeling in here tonight, and everyone's kind of on edge but calm and then excited and then down and up and it's it's quite amazing to watch everyone go through those emotions in here it's a grand final you wouldn't expect anything less so um you know it means a lot to these boys it means a lot to this club you know we want to when it's been you know 28 years uh i, I get re reminded uh, daily uh so hopefully you know these guys have got enough in the tank to to, to see it through well, i'll let you keep pondering that thanks mate yeah, I yeah. just wonder what's going through his emotions. How does he feel? Well, it's got to be Mark a roller coaster moment. of emotions, oh, hasn't it? You know, it's me, up yeah. and down. They started strongly, then they've seen those three heat advantages from Panthers. He looks to, cool. Turned the tide. Yeah, they both look pretty cool, the Rob Lyon, but uh, inside, I'm sure they're whirring away. And uh, these are 
you know, the critical moments, decisions that they have to make, um, are shuffling the pack, because both teams are having to do that with injuries and rider replacement. Rob Lyon now uh, seeing that uh, lead cut to four points on aggregate. There's six points on up over all uh, over on the meeting tonight, excuse me, on the meeting tonight. But um, uh, this man, Michael Palmtoft, has been exceptional. He has been terrific. He's been almost their top man so far this evening. Well, he is their top man so far this evening. And uh, he's out here. Not quite sure who's coming in. Scott Nichols in blue, mate. Scott Nichols coming in yep. with... Um, rider replacement yep. scotty nichols riding so strongly in the previous race that's why we had the delay of course could do with a race win though scott yeah, he could he? do he's um he rode so well on monday night it was a, a superb performance from him there he's giving it everything he has um but but tom brennan just got the better room in that previous race tense stuff nige it is very tense indeed and i still can't call it i'm just looking through the rest of the race card here i just think it's so hard to call it really is six points on the night four on aggregate six races to go bellevue will use dan Bewley another three times and when he's on well, the that's, that's is, handy isn't it very handy yeah <laughs> yeah he's going to be in three of the six races yeah dan well Bewley. that's that's uh, you could almost write that in couldn't you but he can slip up he can slip up but uh heat number 10 yes but all, all peterborough have to do is pack the minor placings yeah exactly right Heat number 10 it is then. Scott Nichols off the inside, the skipper for Peterborough. Then it's Charles Wright going off gate two in the yellow helmet colour. Gate three in red is Michael Palmtoft for Peterborough. And then it's Steve Worrell, the skipper of Bellevue, going off the outside gate. Who do you fancy? Who is going to win this grand final? Who will be crowned 2021 league champions? Or will we need golden heats? to go even past the 15 I heat think, I think finish line. I think everything's possible with these two teams. So unpredictable. You know, when we think back on Monday after heat 11, how the Panthers turned it around. Here we go. Yep, big race coming up. And it's a great start from Warrell up the outside gate in the way. Helmet Keller, a stunning start from Stevie Warrell. That's a true captain's role uh, from the Bellevue man. And now third place, Charles Wright holding that third spot. It's a 4 2 as Michael Pantoff comes move. through. Pantoff charges through to third place. And it's a 3 all And Scott Nichols is charging hard, really pushing hard after Steve Warrell. If it stays like this, he will remain four points on aggregate. Palm but top. Nichols is Palm giving top. it everything. And Pantoff on the inside as well. Worrell's having to really work out. He needs eyes in the back of his head here. Indeed he does. He's got away. Palmtoft has got more speed than Nichols. Has now gone through into second place. Worrell's going to have to close that inside line because Palmtoft is coming. Nichols on the outside. Worrell is now pushed out of it. Palmtoft once again. Oh, right to the front. My God, Nichols. oh my goodness. Can you believe what you're seeing here? Oh, Peter Brown just turned it around. Michael Palmtop, the hero of the hour once again, picks up his second win on the night. He is riding out of his skin, and Scott Nichols, wow, a great effort. And Steve Worrell just did not know which way they were coming. Well, that is a huge moment. That is a massive result. Palmtop and Nichols over Steve Worrell, who did so well to hold the lead for the majority of the race. Where did they find that from? Palm top to Nichols, 5-1, 35-25, Peterborough on the night. And they are now eight points up on aggregate with five races to go. Pressure massively on Bellevue's shoulders now. Pumtoff's at the back. He made a <laughs> dreadful start. Look at this, he's all over the place. Clearly letting the clutch go must be very uncomfortable and quite, uh, you know, you can understand why he's having problems going to the first corner. It's Steve Worrell out in front. He's riding so well here. Really does ride strongly. Nichols charging hard around the outside, but popped off. Look at this. Up the inside, he's got so much speed. And then Worrell's trapped on the inside, and Nichols pounces. And as the race comes to its conclusion, the Panthers fire themselves to first and second, and another massive result 
for the home team and the home team now are in real command of this um, grand final second tie. This is it again with Nichols finally coming round. But the moves earlier on from Palm Toft up the inside were just a delight. And then we see this run to the line. Fabulous speedway. The home crowd clearly delighted. Rob Lyon for the first time this year showing some real emotion. That's how much it means. And what a heroic road that was. What a brilliant ride it was from Palm Toft. All I would say to him, it was a dreadful start. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's still work to do. There's still five races to go. And all Peterborough have to do now, I, I know it's easy to say, is defend. Hold the second and third places. Yeah, no yeah. last places. It's almost impossible. To Welcome back to the grand final. With five heats remaining, Peterborough Panthers have an eight-point advantage on aggregate. The crowd just went wild after they scored that last 5-1. Where we stood, Sam and Malenko, and I, there's a TV monitor, and Bjarni Pedersen and Chris Harris also went wild. What another night of brilliant speedway! Absolutely, this is a perfect, perfect night of speedway. You know, the Panthers um, were getting their momentum going, and then they got their colors dropped a little bit. Um, out of the four last five heats, they they were getting advantages, and that right there, heat number ten was the boiling point for these guys. They went out there. You can see the desire in the Peterborough riders really want to make this happen. And Michael really done a grand job to get himself in there. Michael Pantoff, he described his fingers. It was like receiving an electric shock. What a heroic performance he's putting in. He is. I mean, it, he just knows, you know, this track is, is pretty comfortable for riders that are injured. I rode here, and it's just a big, smooth running racetrack. And for Michael to go out there and perform and let his bike do the work, and we can just see it right here, how he comes underneath it. Scott Nichols is on the outside really working hard, and eventually they wore, they wore Worrell down. Sam, thank you. Heat 11 then. Nigel and Calvin, all yours. Thank you, Abby. Riders up at take three, number 11, and Tom Brennan comes in for Richie Waddell as a reserve substitution here in heat number 11. So they're putting a lot of faith and um, pressure, if you like, on the shoulders of the young man, but he's a type of character that can handle it, that's for sure. Dan Bewley off the inside in white then for Bellevue. Then it's Chris Harris off gate two in red for the Panthers. Tom Brennan, gate three, yellow for... Bellevue and Bjarne Pedersen on that warning wow. goes off the outside in blue and um, yep that warning because of that incident earlier when he was a long way back from the tapes where even if he moved but nice. it was unlikely he'd hit this them. This is a brave move from Mark Lemon here up it against is. Harris and Bjarne Pedersen. Brennan is a rider that's ridden strongly this evening and he's going to have to produce again here. Bewley would say was favourite for the race off the inside. Got to say, the experienced pairing from the Panthers will know exactly what uh, they need to do. Just keep it level. Three all will do nicely. Brennan's been sharp away from the tapes this evening. Can he do it again here? This is a massive moment for Tom Brennan and the Bellevue Aces. Beauty flying. He's off the inside. You can probably say he's favourite to win. But can Tom Brennan for the Bellevue Aces come up with something special here? Heat number 11, Bellevue have five races to claw this back somehow, someway. Harris has been left standing at the start line. And now Bjarne Pedersen is going to try the outside run. Here comes Bjarne Pedersen, but the lead is with Dan Bewley. And now Tom Brennan will try the inside. Pedersen holding the outside run. Now he's using all the experience to try and jump back up the inside. And it Chris Harris it. isn't done yet. Here comes Chris Harris up the inside run. And he has passed Tom Brennan magnificently. And this will do Peterborough Panthers all night long. All they need are three alls, and they'll take another step closer towards that league title. Well, what a start from Dan Beauty. What a terrifyingly poor start for Chris <laughs> Harris. He was half an hour behind, but he's made up for it big time because he's come flying through into third place to join his partner. Bjarne Pedersen certainly worked hard in the opening stages of the race to get himself into second place. And Tom Brennan, unfortunately, this time will miss out. Beauty does the business, but the three all does the home team just nicely. Great ride from Dan Bewley, but Peterborough are edging ever closer. Four races to go, and they are still eight points clear, and the clock is ticking for Bellevue Aces. They are really now having to dig deep and find something special in the next few races to turn this around. Well, Peterborough can feel that they're getting ever closer. Bewley the winner. Pedersen second, Harris third, three apiece, 38-28 on the night, and 82-74, Peterborough lead on aggregate.
you see it again, and I uh, don't know what happened to Chris Harris there. He just went nowhere fast off the start. Beauty off the inside makes a great start, and Tom Brennan, fair play to him. He's right there again, but he's trapped on the inside, and Bjarne Pedersen makes that move early in the race, and really, um, uh, it was an awkward situation for him there. It just didn't quite work out for the youngster here. He gets in a little bit of no man's land there, and Bjarne Pedersen is round the outside, and then now Pedersen realizes he's not going to get around the outside of Bewley, so he makes sure that he's got second place as they complete the first lap. And here comes Harris. I mean, what a move that was. We're seeing that time and time again from Chris. He hasn't made starts tonight. Silky style of Dan Bewley out in front. He's won his last three outings. But the second and third to the home team keeps that 10-point margin on the night and eight points up overall on aggregate. They are in charge right now. Yeah, great stuff from Dan Bewley, but he needs help. He needs support yeah, from his he's colleagues. Got to, he's got to have a heat advantage, and unfortunately, when it was at this stage on Monday night, when it was almost exactly the same situation, with the Aces 10 points up and the Panthers 10 points down, they came up with two consecutive five ones to turn that around. Can the Bellevue Aces do something similar now? Well, drama here at the East of England Arena. Only four races remain in this Premiership season. Very much advantage Peterborough Panthers here. It'll be tense down there in the pits area, that's for sure. But Bellevue. it was at this stage, wasn't it, Monday night? It's a great point, Carl. You know, because Absolutely. they were 10 points up or 10 points down, the Panthers. Can the Aces do something similar now? They do need to because, as you rightly say, the races are running out. Four races to go, 10 points down, eight points back. Yep, and uh, let's head down to the pits, and uh, Steve Brandon is, is down in the pits. I am, thanks Nigel. I'm just going to step in. There's a, there's a chief mechanic giving his overview here. Scott Nichols, just making sure Bjarni's set for the next one, two on the trot for him. I wouldn't say much of a mechanic, but yeah, just made a couple of little alterations. He was quick in that one, but his uh, primary chain's a little bit tight, so they're working frantically to try and loosen her off, and I'm just being a spectator. I'm, I'm sure no one in the pit lane's uh, counting any chickens or anything at the moment, but uh, the team performance tonight is remarkable. It has, you know, um, but no, we're certainly not. We, we've got to keep pushing. We know they're up for it. Um, yeah, so we want to get the job done. We want to bring this title home and, uh, yeah, so keep pushing on. And the live audience tonight, the crowd, the fans in the stadium, it's like a, a sixth, seventh, eighth man for you. Oh, it's unreal. I mean, you know, good Bellevue turnout too, but I mean, I haven't seen a crowd like this for a long, long time, British Speedway, so it's great to see. And, uh, you know, good shows being put on, but we want to finish on top. Not far to go. Good luck with the rest of it. Yeah, well, it's all hands to the pump there. They're using Pedersen again and uh, quite clearly going for it. They're going to go for it. They're eight points up on aggregate. They want to seal the deal as soon as they can. And they're going to try and... They'll have to use Palin again, won't they, Nigel? They'll have to use him in heat 14. Well, I would think they'll bring him in for Bianchi yeah, in, heat 14. in heat 14. But uh, they're going for the win early doors. Pedersen riding so well, dropping down to reserve. But that seems to have really invigorated him because he's amongst the points on a regular basis now. Beautifully well, turned out bikes. I looked at them earlier. I mean, they are spotless and yes. very nicely prepared. Always a professional beyond yeah, the Yeah, absolutely. And he's been a certainly somebody that's always prided himself on excellent equipment. Yes. Riders now emerging out onto the track and the Bellevue Aces. Eight point down, eight points down on aggregate. And it's only two got, five ones though. Yeah, but uh, that, that's easier said than done. I know it is. I know. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's only two five ones. Or it is. Yeah. Four four twos. So four four twos, and we get to we see the dramatic turnaround that we saw on Monday night. Yes, it's possible, of course. And uh, Mark Lemon will be feeling the heat now. There's no doubt about it. The home team have battled very well to get themselves in this position, and uh, they will have to rely on Stevie Worrell, that man at the start there. He's got to come up with a stunning ride now. Cooks out here as well. And uh, it'll be interesting to know whether they have repaired that first bike or he's sticking with the second bike. We don't know that. And here comes Pedersen. He's ridden well, superbly well. A man going into retirement, riding this well. I'll tell you one thing, Nigel, he will miss it, that's for sure. Of course he will. He's had a fantastic night. By the way, big championship uh, playoff action coming up as well. Edinburgh and Glasgow uh, this weekend go head-to-head. -head. And uh, Leicester and Paul on uh, Saturday, so some big meetings this weekend domestically, also on the international scene. Great Britain are in the Speedway of Nations at Bellevue on 
Saturday and Sunday. We wish the Great Britain boys every success for that Absolutely. at the weekend and see if they can bring it home. That's yeah, we are you. hearing that um, uh, Cookie's now back on his original bike, so he'll be happy with that. They've managed to repair all the damage. We've got Tom Brennan coming back out here. He's been a very busy man just recently, hasn't he? He's been riding really hard. Tough last time out for him with that move from Harris to relegate him to the back. But he's got the inside gate, and Brennan's been making good starts here this evening. Yes, here we go. Heat number 12. Four races to decide the champions, maybe more. Tom Brennan off the inside in yellow. Gate number two in red is Craig Cook for Peterborough. Steve Worrell, the Bellevue skipper, gate three white. How they could do with the captain leading home here. Oh, yeah. And then it's Bjarne Pedersen, who's been brilliant at reserve tonight. Nine points from four outings down at reserve for the Panthers. He's off the outside gate in blue. As we see Rob Lyon, the Peterborough team manager, watching on. Here we go. Big race. And who's going to emerge from the start? Pedersen's made a beauty from four. Brilliant. Bjarne Pedersen is there. Oh, he's got his trapping gloves on tonight, all right. Now Craig Cook will try up the inside for Peterborough. It's a three all thing stand. Bellevue need more than this, though. Cook's at the back. Charging hard is Wall trying to get around the outside of his teammate and partner, Tom Brennan. But this will do Peterborough all day long, and Cook is slowing up at the back. But Bjarne Pedersen is kicking on. Yeah, unfortunate for Craig Kirk. He's got some sort of a mechanical issue there. Pedersen made a superstar from the outside. Brennan's flying in second place, pushing on. Pedersen cannot relax. Got a little bit of breathing space with Stevie Worrell back in third. Gianni Pedersen really coming to the fore here this evening, turning on the style, turning the clock back, really reveling in the grand final second leg. Great points on Lang we're good up. They're going to maintain that now with Pedersen leading from the front. Bjarne Pedersen on his way to 12 points from five right and reserve for Peterborough Panthers. They're edging ever closer. Bellevue can't land a blow. Craig Cook packed up, but still, Wall and Brennan could not get the better of Bjarne Pedersen, who made an immaculate start out wide. Brilliant first corner, Nights absolutely flew around the opposition to hit the front. Disappointment from for Cook. He started strongly, but he's faded away. But you've got to say that the rest of the Panthers have done remarkably well, and they are holding strong with that eight-point lead overall. Edging ever closer. Mm. Peterborough are three races away. 41-31 on the night. Eight points up on aggregate with three races to go. Peterborough don't need a lot more from here. They do not, and uh, the reason why that is is because we're getting performances like this from Bjarni Pedersen, who I uh, say again is retiring very shortly, <laughs> um, but he's riding like a man that's um, uh, just found his mojo, big style. Got to say Tom Brennan there pushing on in second place. Once again, showing great endeavor from Tom Brennan, um, but Steve Worrell just not quite clicking here this evening. And he was back in third, and Cook quite clearly had some sort of issue. Pedersen flying to the checkered flag. Super ride from him. And he maintains the Panthers' position, which is actually, they are in charge of this uh, grand final. Ten points up on the night. Three to go. Charles Wright comes in in the yellow helmet colour, and Bellevue need a race advantage. It is as simple as that. If it's a three-all, the best they can do is draw an aggregate and take us to Golden Heats. So every well. race now, the pressure is huge on Bellevue. How they would love a 5-1 from Dan Bewley and Charles Wright against Chris Harris, who hasn't made a start all night. But Michael Palmtoft has been brilliant. Yeah, well, Palmtoft, Palmtoft is the thorn in the side for the Aces, that's for sure. Palmtoft hasn't been making great starts, but he's shown great endeavour and speed on the track and has been able to overtake for fun at times. And he really has ridden really nicely for the home team. Charles Wright has tried ever so hard, but it hasn't been his night. Dan Bewley, well, he's been class. Apart from the first race where he just got outmaneuvered, he has been pretty much unbeatable. And he's going to have to win this race and just hope, hope that Charles Wright from gate four, which has been working well. Charles Wright has been, uh, gate four, has been working well, and Charles Wright is right there now. Yep, huge race coming up. Heat number 13. And um, eight points up on the night. We have to say, by the way, of course, that if Peterborough get a 4-2 here, then it's all over. So um, Michael Palmtoft off the inside. Dan Bewley off gate number two. Chris Harris off gate number three. 
Charles Wright off the outside. But you would expect Dan Bewley to win the race. I think that's a fair yeah, comment. he's favourite to win the race. Michael Palmtoft, of course, has been very quick. And if he makes a start, he'll make Bewley work very hard. But Bewley is the favourite on paper, certainly before the race. Charles Wright is the key here, really, for the aces. Can he do something? Miraculous! You've got to say that Wright may well have the beating away from the tapes of Harris, who's been poor away from the start uh, tonight. So this is, really is the final roll of the dice. It could very easily be the final roll of the dice for the Bellevue Aces. Here we go. Heat number 13. It's getting very, very tense here. Time running out for Bellevue. And away from the start they go. And Palm Toft has made a good one. So is Wright. Charles Wright's got there. Chance for Bellevue 5-1 here now. Watch them go up. Dan Bewley has been passed by Chris Harris. Can you believe that? And Dan Bewley is at the back, and now Palm Toft and Harris will chase hard after Charles Wright. But when Wright's ahead, he is tough to pass. But they've got speed, and the man in blue here Palm is Toft. Chris Harris and Palm Toft on the inside. Oh. Is this the race where Peterborough win the lead title? Palm Toft and now Harris around the outside. Peterborough on a 5 1. This could be the race where Peterborough clinch the lead title. What a move for Palm and Harris, they were up against it there, Pumped up once again showing fabulous form, he's come through to the front, Harris was great, Beauty coming on strong nights, Beauty on the outside, can he be the party pooper for the Panthers, he's in into second place. A 4-2 would do it for Peterborough, but Beauty has got speed, now Pumped up going to the close of all, Beauty's oh done it. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness gracious me, where did that come from? Oh. Beauty out of the top draw! He saves oh, Bellevue! Well, Bellevue has still got a lifeline! Oh my goodness <laughs> me! <laughs> oh. That was almost indescribable how good it was! He saved Bellevue! That was Speedway from the Gods! Speedway from the Gods, Nigel! How did damn Beauty do this? Michael Palmtop was so good out in front! Ah, never in doubt, he's done it easy! Yeah, he just gave him a half a chance, yeah! <laughs> Well, oh, all man. that can happen now for Bellevue is two five ones to take us to Golden Heats. How good was Bewley there? Uh, initially, it was all about Palm Toft and Harris, but Wright's gone oh. from first to last. Yeah, goodness me, staggering. Stuff. So there you go, Bewley the winner, Palm Toft second, Harris third, and that's a three all. Forty four thirty four on the night, eighty eight eighty. Peterborough lead on aggregate, and Bellevue need two five ones to take us to Golden Heats. Here we see it again, and uh, initially, uh, Charles Wright actually made a fantastic start from gate number four, but Palm Toft has been fast up the inside all night long, and Charles Wright, as hard as he tried, he just could not resist the move from the Danish rider, and uh, Palm Toft on the inside there. Bewley's there in the middle of it, but Harris then makes that stunning move to come through into second place and join his partner. Then Palm Toft uh, sets about getting the better of Charles Wright because he's just got that speed. He just generates lots and lots of drive where other riders don't. And now we're seeing him come up the inside, the shorter way, the uh, fastest way. But Bewley late on, I mean, they thought they had this in the pocket. He can't believe it. I bet, I bet when Palm Toft looked to his right there and thought, that's got to be Chris Harris. Surely it's got to be Chris Harris. Oh dear, it's a mistake. And Dan Bewley gives the aces a lifeline. Well, if you're Rob Lyon, if you're, uh, if you're Rob Lyon, do you put Jordan Payton in blue for Pedersen or red for Scott Nichols? Well, that makes you wonder, doesn't it? And Brennan, he's gone for blue, so he's taken Bjarne Pedersen out. So Jordan Payton goes in blue, and Tom Brennan will replace Jai Etheridge in yellow. It's a last throw of the dice for Mark Lemon. Scott Nichols and Jordan Palin up against Charles Wright and Tom Brennan. If Bellevue gets well, gonna a 5-1... going to have to be a delay here, surely. Sorry? Because Wright was in the previous race. Yeah. Well, 88-80 is the scoreline. Yeah, I heard what you said, Nigel. You're absolutely spot on. Palin could have... They could have could have put him in for Scotty Nichols, but Nichols has ridden strongly, hasn't he? He has, second yeah. places. And uh, all of a sudden... There, it might have been a fall, that's all. They have to use him here. If you are at home wondering why has Payton got to be used here, because a rider has to have a minimum of three rides. Jordan has only had two, a zero and a three. It's had a long way until this race. Yeah, not ideal. 
So he goes off gate two, and then Scott Nichols will go off the outside here. Do you know, gate four has worked well this evening, and that is not always the case here at Peterborough, but we saw with Charles Wright, unfortunately, he didn't score. But both Peterborough boys are up at tapes. They haven't given Charles Wright much time here to turn around with two on the spin here. Could this be the moment? Could very well be. Brennan's ridden strongly. He's been busy as well. Really has had a lot of uh, responsibility thrust upon him this evening as the meeting has gone on. He's been making good starts and holding some decent speed. Here's the, uh, the turnaround for Charles Wright. Not easy with a minute. Well, I've got two minutes on. I'm a little confused on how much time there is actually left here because the clock says zero. Yeah, but the yeah, yellow two-minute light is still flashing, so... So there must still be time for him yes. to make his way to the start. 30 seconds remain. OK, not too much time, though. Somebody went early with a two-minute clock, I think. OK. But, but uh, yeah, um, they need... A, let's just put it in simple terms. Bellevue need, uh, need two five ones to take us into golden heats. Anything else? And Peterborough are the league champions. They just need a second place. Yep, and uh, you've got to believe that Scotty Nichols or Jordan Palin, how good would it be for Jordan Palin to clinch the league title? I mean, that would be a special moment for the youngster. Here we go. Heat number 14 it is then here at Peterborough, and uh, Bellevue need those two five ones to save it and go into golden heats. Charles Wright off the inside in white. Jordan Palin goes off gate two in blue, the young reserve. He won his last outing. Gate three in yellow is Tom Brennan for Bellevue. And Scott Nichols goes off the outside in red, the skipper of the Peterborough Panthers. Here we go. Heat number 14, a huge race coming right up here. Oh. And Bellevue oh. have made a great start. They're on a 5-1 here. And Jordan Payne was left standing at the start. And Bellevue looking good here. Nichols will take up the challenge now in the red helmet. Palin's there as well. But it looks like the league title race is going down to heat number 15 here. Palin! Scott Nichols can't land a blow. Palin's got there, I've done what, that both the Panthers boys make poor starts there. And the Bellevue Aces have got away here with Brennan and Charles Wright. Nichols now coming, oh, Palin in trouble, very well. Here comes Nichols. Nichols in the second split place. Them. He split the duo of the Aces, that's all they need, Knight. Oh, and they're going to win it from no. there. Charles Wright's packed up. Oh, disaster for Bellevue. Charles Wright's bike has packed up, and Nichols is now going to charge hard on the inside of Tom Brennan, and Peterborough Panthers are going to be crowned 2021 Premiership Speedway champions, and it is Scott Nichols who takes the win in Heat 14. Let the celebrations begin for the Peterborough Panthers, who are British Speedway Premiership champions. Well, what a night of speedway this has been. What, what a uh, fabulous advert once again. Fitting that the captain wins the tie and clinches the deal in Heat 14. They made dreadful starts. They didn't get away from the start line at all. But it's just been their night ever since Heat number 6, when they got that 5-1 there, really has turned the tide and they've been on a great roll. Fabulous scenes, you've got a feel for the Bellevue Aces, they have really played their part in this. But in the end, the Peterborough Panthers, who topped the, te the regular season, chose the second best team in Wolverhampton and beat them in the semi-finals. And they've come up trumps here in the grand final. What a win, what a couple of nights of Speedway. Wow, Rob Lyon, first season in charge of Peterborough. He won the second tier with Kings Lynn. He goes straight across to his family, his daughters and his wife, Debbie. Brilliant What seeds. a moment. Rob Lyon, his first season as Peterborough manager, former Great Britain boss. He can't believe it. And that's the most emotional we've seen him all season. He's been holding that in all year. Yeah, I think he'll be smiling all winter. And rightly so, because his team has done him proud. He's uh, worked ever so hard. They had the injury problems, the disappointment of losing Hans Anderson, of course, on Monday, not being able to use him tonight. Uh, they haven't had it all their own way. And really, when you reflect on the two meetings, heats 12 and 13 on Monday night were absolutely crucial. Scott Nichols, the winner, Tom Brennan second, Jordan Palin third, Charles Wright retired 4-2, 48 36 on the night, 92 82 on aggregate. We've got Heat 15 to come. We have indeed. We're looking back on the race that actually clinches the league title for the Panthers. Doesn't Initially, like from they here, were dreadful <laughs> away from the start. Absolutely 
def uh, desperately poor starts from both of them. Just don't get there at all. And you've got to say that Brennan and Wright actually got away. And you thought for a moment here at this very early stage that all of a sudden this is going to go down to a last heat decider. But uh, the Panthers had other ideas. And Scotty Nichols, who hadn't won a race all night, really works his socks off here. Palin in trouble on the outside there. His race is run from that moment on. But Scott Nichols, you've got to say, really rides very well indeed and gets himself into second place. They know the significance of that. He then comes through to win the race and the celebrations begin. We have got one more race to go, but the tie is done. And uh, a great effort from this team all season long, Nigel. They were underrated at the beginning of the year, but they have proved everybody wrong and produced a masterclass when it really mattered. Let's get some reaction with Steve Brandon. Thanks, Nigel. Scott Nichols has just watched himself getting the bumps here and said they must be strong lads. Uh, I, I, I won't laugh at you. Um, listen, Scott, in all seriousness, to be captain of this team and what you've done this season, losing riders and coming into the final with what people would perceive as a weaker team, to bring it home personally, that's amazing. Oh, man, it's huge. It's, um, man, you should have heard what I said under my helmet. That's why I've got a croaky voice. Um, it's unreal. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a huge honour to be the captain, but you know, there's seven of us are captains, you know. We've all got a huge amount of experience, and Geordie's been fantastic, you know. Young lad, he's kind of listened to everything, and he's rode out of his socks. It's been a full team effort. We've, had, we've been up against it, um, but, you know, we, we brought it home, and, uh, yeah, the hashtag Dad's Army. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah, it's amazing. I've called Rob Lyon, Captain Mannering, once this year already. and might get it again. Biani, for you, you know, if this, this, this is your last competitive Speedway meeting, what a way to go out to. Yeah, absolutely. I can't dream of any better way to, to finish it all. So, uh, so pleased uh, to be part of this team. And uh, I nearly thought about to take another season with this boy. So it, uh, it's been fantastic, you know, uh, t top of the table and winning the playoff now. The Death Arm is just the best. I think you're too young to ride again next year. Um, you know, again, ju just just sum up what it means to be the 2021 league champion, Scott, first. It's unreal. Um, you know, because you, you win, you're the best team over the season. We topped the table only by a small margin, but, you know, you can go out and lose it in the first round. So, um, unreal. But the amount of fans that have turned out, that makes it special. And, and obviously, uh, we're dedicating this win to Colin Pratt. Bless him up there. He was a huge part of Peter Brosby, a huge part of my career, and he's been involved with Bianni's as well. So, uh, yeah, that's for you, Cole. I think you summed it up. But Bianni, just for you, final emotions on being a league champion this year? Yeah, you know, fantastic. I can't ask, like I said before, I can't ask for any more. What a, what a night to finish off. Uh, so I um, enjoy every minute over here. I'm so pleased to be back in British Speedway. So, uh, yeah, here we go. And the good news is for everyone watching at home and everyone on the stand, we've got one race left. Well done, gents. Yep. One yeah. race to go. Congratulations to Dad's Army, the Peterborough Panthers. Omelenko, the Dad's Army, they embrace that moniker and they deserve this win, don't they? They did. There's 14 riders here and two team managers and a heck of a lot of fans that were out there trying for their best team to win and Peterborough came to the table and they just, they just did, they did the job right. And there's so much noise reverberating around Absolutely. the East of England arena. You know, it's just really good. I mean, I, there's a lot of familiar faces here on both sides. It's really hard for me because I rode for Bellevue and Peterborough, but fair play to Peterborough to go out there and clinch it. They did strong at Bellevue to come here tonight and back it up. Super job. Absolutely brilliant. Well, we have one heat remaining. So Nigel and Calvin, take it away. Yes, what a fantastic night of Speedway we've seen. And uh, congratulations to these boys. They have really done the business. Such a shame for Bellevue, of course, but I think the point was made very uh, relevantly by Scott that Peterborough finished top of the table and that uh, they are worthy league champions. So well done to them. Yeah, but they've shown such great determination, Nigel. You know, it's not just that. I think that, uh, you know, they also chose Wolverhampton, who finished second in the regular season, which was a brave move, and they've outperformed that. And they came through there in fine colours. And tonight, after a bit of a shaky start, you've got to say that they have just turned on the style and battled for their lives. They've done a great job. Harris uh, is in red and Pedersen in blue. Bjarni Pedersen's final race in British League Speedway. Dan Bewley in white for Bellevue off one. And Stevie Worrell 
going off gate number three. Yeah, look at that, five rides, five points. I mean, that is that is probably where it's gone wrong a little bit, you know, for the Aces. They'll be bitterly disappointed, the Aces. They have been so close on more than one occasion on winning the title, but uh, once again, they've come up just one short. Uh, but they've been beaten by the better team here this evening, that's for sure. Here we go, one last time. Yep, here we go then, heat number 15, the final race of the Premiership season and the final race of our coverage on Eurosport this year. And it's a good start from Bewley, as we would have thought. Brianna Pedersen battling through to second spot here. Chris Harris is the man in red, charging hard around the outside now. It's Stevie Warrell for Bellevue, but he can't land a blow. Uh, Dan Bewley's been superb, but he hasn't quite had the support he needs tonight. No, he has not. Once again, Bewley's away nicely. Good stuff from Bjarne Pedersen in second place. Harris is really working hard in third place. Stevie Warrell once again just not quite on top of his game this evening. And it's been disappointment for the Aces captain. He'll be gutted on the way home, that's for sure. Dan Bewley, as you rightly say, has ridden superbly well apart from the first race and has really kept his team in it, particularly that stunning ride in Heat 13. But for the Aces, uh, they're just going to have to regroup in the winter and come again next year. And I'm sure they will. Dan Bewley, a tremendous night for him. Five wins out of six rides. But it's Peterborough Panthers who round the night off with a 51-39 victory, and that is a 10-point aggregate success. Yeah, and that is some achievement. It didn't look like that at one stage, but my goodness me, did they come good. And the Peterborough Riders and management are on the home straight here now in front of the main stand. What a season it's been. Yeah. Well done, Dan Bewley. He gets a sporting round of applause. Tremendous performance from him. But it's the Peterborough Panthers who are the champions. And I think Bjarne Pedersen is going to get the bumps to round off his British Speedway career. He ends as a British League champion. Wow, what a way to go out. And it's a great gesture from the team. He's been a great servant to World Speedway. And he has uh, been done, well, he's done a great job over here winning titles with the Paul Pirates. And what a fabulous, a fairy tale, really, going out on your final meeting in your career and winning the league title for the Peterborough Panthers. It really is a very special moment for Bjarni Pedersen. Chris Harris, once again, has done a great job. And uh, there's the mechanic as well, Richard Jewell, done sterling work throughout the year. But uh, it's been a conclusive win, really, an emphatic win in the end. It was looking so tight and tense early on this evening. But uh, at the conclusion of the grand final, the Peterborough Panthers have come through in flying colours. Dan Bewley, the winner. Chris Harris was second. Bjarne Pedersen third. It's a three-all. 51-39, the final score. 95-85 on aggregate. Rob Lyon gets the bumps. And what a season. Absolutely unbelievable. Keith Chapman, the owner, is down there as well. So we have our champions of 2021 British Speedway Premiership. It is the Peterborough Panthers. They were held as dad's army, so much made of their combined age. But what a fairy tale it has been for these experienced riders with the rising star as well of Jordan Palin. Sam Malenko joins us, us as well as Calvin Tate and ran down from that commentary box. Calvin, what a night of Speedway. Another great night. Yeah, so exciting. I'm, it's uh, delighted. It's been great. It's been a real treat to watch both these meetings. Um, it was really tense at the beginning of tonight, really close, with the Aces getting off to a strong start. And it looked like they may well have had the upper hand. But after Heat 6, I mean, crikey, the home team really turned on the style. And, and in truth, the Aces just didn't have the answers. So, But it's been a fabulous couple of meetings, hasn't it? Yeah, it really has. It's just been an advert for the sport. But as as Calvin said, you had Dan Bewley, apart from his first race, was unbeaten. But he, he didn't have the support around him of the, the engine room that Calvin's described as the Royal Brothers. It, it was really out on his own. You know, it's really difficult to pull that out of a team when it's not there. You know, it's just no matter what you do, Mark Lehman is probably all hustling them up and they're working as hard as they can, but yeah. you know the ingredients weren't there and Peterborough were a stronger team. They were a stronger team, Calvin, and they just they didn't roll over, did they? And no. you said it in commentary. It was he eleven and um, they had 
four races to go in Bellevue and they had well, yeah. a 10 point deficit. You could, now that they've won, you could look back at Monday night and just say that 12 and 13, those two five ones yeah. there, were absolutely crucial and coming in just two points down tonight. Just incredible stuff. Well, let's hear from Mark Lemon now. He is with Steve Brandon. Thanks, Abby. Mark Lemon, just not quite the aces night. No, no. I mean, ah. Credits where credits due, you know the uh, the Panthers have been, the, you know they, they topped the table, they've been the team all year, and uh, they just had a bit too much firepower uh, tonight, and, uh, and obviously on Monday. But uh, really proud of my boys, really proud of our fans that have been travelling, supporting us. Our, our thanks to our owners, our sponsors. You know it's uh, it's been a stellar year and in very tough times. So credit to everyone that you know just to get to the grand final. Uh, and I I can see some real disappointment on the faces. It's obvious, you know, looking on. But you know your young team. There's so much potential in that pit lane from your end of the things. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. But uh, trying to explain that right now, it, it hurts. You know, like uh, I might have a smile on my face, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm hurting like they're hurting, and um, you know we have to come back and bounce from that. So I've been here before as a rider at this very track. I know what it feels like, and, and being in their shoes. So I'm gutted for. I just want to put my arms around them and you know pick them up. But uh, you know it's been a classic uh, you know an event. So uh, well done to the Peterborough once again. All right, nice words. Thanks, Mark. He does know how it feels, doesn't he, Sam? And um, they lost by one point when they were in the final in 2006 against Reading, and you can talk quite closely about that. Yeah, it was a frustrating time for all of us. We, we know what it was like to hurt, and that's just sport in general, right? I was sitting in the hospital one time when Bellevue last won it at Wolverhampton, so, you know, that was hard for me at the same time. Anytime we're in the, in the racing competition where you want to win, and you got to go up against it. You want to be a part of it, but at the same time, we hate losing, don't we? Sure, yeah, it's, a, it's an awful feeling. They're going to be driving home this evening feeling really quite um, disappointed. And Mark will they will take a few days to get over it because yeah. they really were in charge. Heat 11 on Monday, they had this in, they were totally in control. And it's just not worked out for them. And I just think that, you know, it's winners and losers all the time and they will be gutted. Of course, the Panthers are absolutely on sky high. You know, they're delighted and they have done remarkably well. But uh, as I say again, for the neutral, um, it's been just a fantastic demonstration of British people. Brilliant stuff. The crowd stuff. can't believe. Well, he couldn't even get in how here. How good was that race with Dan Bewley? I mean, he oh, came from nowhere. He came Charles from another Wright planet. Charles Wright was in front he from was, the start. He was, and he last. But Dan Bewley came around. from another planet to win that race, yeah, absolutely. to give it the aces a lifeline. Yeah, I mean, that's just in. staggering stuff. It yeah. has been staggering. There have been so it, it much drama. It was quite exciting, Abby. It was quite exciting. <laughs> I'm so pleased that you've got your voice still, and Nigel, because yeah, um, after yeah. Monday night, there was some screaming and shouting going on. When we saw that footage, at the beginning of the meeting, I thought, God, how on earth did we survive? I mean, crikey. And Look again tonight, crowd. there's been some wonderful highs. Fantastic turnout. Hasn't been too cold. The weather's no. been kind to us. So, you know, we've had all the ingredients there for a great finale. And, we, and we've had it, haven't we? We've yeah. got it. The, the, the thing of it, too, is look how our, our whole year started. In the middle of May, sure. we didn't know what was going to happen. No. And look at this oh, finish off with this. This marvelous. is just a revival. Yeah. Speedway's back. Yeah. Sure, Big absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a great point. When you think that we had restricted crowds and all the uncertainty of COVID, and yeah. then to come here tonight and see record crowd, Calvin, it's... Yeah, and it's wonderful. And, and Sam's absolutely spot on there. You know, he's hit the nail on the head. It's been terrific. It was a difficult start to the season. We didn't quite know how things were going to pan out. Some clubs weren't sure if they could continue. So all of a sudden, now to finish like this, it's, it's wonderful. Well, Dad's Army will uh, certainly enjoy this. The presentation time, I'll hand you to Nigel Pearson to talk us through it. Thanks, Abby. Yes, and uh, a great moment here because Troy Pratt, the uh, son of, sadly now, the late Colin Pratt, the Peter promoter who passed away recently, is going to hand over the league trophy to the champions. And what a night it's been here as the Peterborough side make their way over to the presentation area. Certainly at the start of the season, many people, including the experts in the Speedway Star magazine, were questioning the wisdom of a team with, shall we say, the age, the average age in their side. And that uh, nickname of Dad's Army certainly took off, and the team embraced that, which was excellent. And what a performance it's been from Peterborough. Top of the table and also winners of the playoffs. And now, 2021 British Speedway Premiership Champions, Peterborough Panthers. What a moment. Bottom of the table, the last time League Speedway was held in this country in 2019. That was the Swindon Robins. Young club mascot, 
lifting the uh, trophy as well. What a lovely moment that is for him. Fantastic season, Chris Harris. Oh, he's delighted. His 10th playoff campaign. Bjarne Pedersen waving farewell to British Speedway by lifting the trophy. Hans Anderson's got changed. Even though he's not ridden tonight, he's put his race suit on. Jordan Palin, talented teenager. What a moment for the young man. And Rob Lyon, the manager, he <laughs> runs to the end to lift the trophy. He did that with Kings Lynn in the second tier of British Speedway. He's now done it in the top flight with the Peterborough Panthers live in front of the TV cameras. And a huge crowd here at the East of England showground. They were queuing up here hours before the stadium opened. Queues were all the way back down to the main road. And they have loved it. Maybe next year, more of these fans will turn out every week to see the wonderful spectacle that is Speedway. Still some action to come around the country in the remaining weeks of this season. The championship playoffs in full swing. It is Leicester and Paul in the semi-final and uh, Edinburgh and Glasgow ready to do battle as well this weekend. Rob Lyon, congratulations to him and the rest of the Peterborough Panthers. The photographers will do their job now and we'll hand back to the pits area in our studio. Here's Abby. Great scenes, Calvin, and I almost love the fact that Hans Anderson's done a bit of a John Terry there, but rightly so, because he was running around the pits and was really part of this yeah, great he, team performance. And he's done great sterling work, you know, particularly when he was down at reserve. I mean, he was really putting, piling on the points. So, you know, I, I've got no issue with that at all. I think he's probably rightly should be out a there, but absolutely. I understand that. But uh, great scenes. I mean, these are... These are the sort of pictures and moments that you're going to, you know, savour for the rest of your lives and when you win the league title like this. And Bjarne Pedersen, what a special moment for him to retire this evening and go out a winner like that. I wish we could do that, right? Oh, Every yeah, time. absolutely. This is the dream way to finish Yeah, to go career. out on the top like that yeah. is quite special. So yeah. um, they did mention that he might be back, but uh, you never know. Because <laughs> he said how much he loved riding with these boys, and uh, you just think, sure. You know, that's a lot to do with yet. this track, though, isn't it? This track will let a rider ride a long sure, time, yeah. I think. Yeah, so absolutely. it's a, it's a a good big crack and my kind you know, on, so my kind on your body <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay let's hear it from brando for the last time this evening we're just putting out peg light. thanks abby rob lyon your emotions right now sir incredible incredible um yeah i mean what a what a team what a fantastic team the resilience has been, been there all year and tonight they really 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 wanted this and what a fantastic performance. Unbelievable. And the Dad's Army moniker, everyone's looked at it, laughed at it, chuckled about it, but you cannot beat experience in any sport, and in Speedway it counts for so much. Absolutely, yeah. I don't know what the combined age is, but it's pretty high. Uh, but, yeah, it, you can't beat it. You can't buy it. And uh, they've proved all year long that it means so much. And we also mentioned to you one night about the fact you don't give much away. Tonight, I can see... You're a very, very proud man. Yeah, I, I am very proud. I'd like to dedicate this win to Colin Pratt. You know, um, he's been such a, a great servant to Speedway and obviously to Peterborough in the last couple of years, and that's what this is for Colin. Enjoy the night. Thank you very much, Rob. Gentlemen, then, your final thoughts on the 2021 season. Well, personally, I think it was, you know, it was a difficult start coming back into the season, but we got rolling, we got Speedway back in, crowds started to come back. You could sense the enthusiasm for people that had been away, starved of action for 12 months. And culminating like this, you know, apart from the couple of rain-offs we've had recently, to be honest, this last week, it's really come right for us. So uh, the ideal finish, really, it's been it's thoroughly enjoyable. Sam, what would you add? It's been a big pleasure to come back into this uh, position here and be a part of this uh, TV team and um, I've witnessed some of the best speedway and it's just really good to see that there's been competitive level of speedway and youngsters coming up as well and that's real important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, the rising star rising, yeah. rising star I think seems to have worked really nicely. Yeah, and Jordan Palin, Tom Brennan tonight both getting um, mm. wins as well. Really shone a light on the rising Already star. Already looking forward to 2022. There you go. So <laughs>